Good evening, everyone. At 6 p.m., I declare this uh, resume meeting open, and I'd like to welcome those uh, present in the public gallery, those watching on live stream, all staff and councillors. I'd like to start by saying Kaya Kartajan, Wajak Noongar Budja. Hello, I acknowledge we're on Wajak Noongar land, and in doing so, we acknowledge traditional custodians of the land on what we're meeting tonight, the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation and their continuing connection to the land, waters and community. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and their descendants. Item two, attendance and apologies. Um, I have Councillor Howlett and Councillor Kylie on approved leave of absence. I note all councillors are present other than Councillor Richardson who's uh, coming up the stairs as we speak. Uh, so we've got no one participating by electronic means. Uh, takes us to part B. Uh, we'll start the meeting where we left it uh, last week, councillors. And the first item is item 4.6, proposed carport in Jinder Road, Coongamaya. Councillor Johnson, thank you. Thank it's you, on Mr. It's on page uh, 100, 501 of your agenda, 501. My motion is that council resolve to approve the proposed variations to the deemed to comply requirements of the residential design codes of Western Australia with respect to the proposed carport at lot 150, number 44, Jinder Road, Kungamaya. Two, advise the applicant, owner and any other party that made a submission of council's decision accordingly. Three, record the reason for changing the recommendation is that the proposed carport is not considered to have any adverse impact on the streetscape of Jinder Road. Thank you. I've got a move. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Catalano, I was just about to lapse the motion. Um, is there anyone against? You wish to debate it, Councillor Bowman? Yes. Thank you. You've got three minutes. The three-minute rules applies from our uh, meeting of last week. So thank you, Councillor Johnson. You have three minutes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. It's good to know I've got three minutes to talk about a carport. <laughs> so it's a, it's a three-car carport in Kungamaya. And I think three minutes is quite a generous amount of time especially when you say compare it with uh, such things as the Lloyd Street Bridge, the Midland Oval, uh, the uh, Stock Road and its associated DCP. So um, three, three minutes for this is, uh, is very generous and I think we need to look at, uh, at our timing, how much time we spend on each item. Point of order, relevance. Yeah, I'm talking about the Kungamaya carport here, Councillor. Well, if you can start your debate, because I've heard nothing about the debate yet, so thanks, Councillor Johnson, you're wasting Sorry, time. It's, 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 it's very right. Well, that's the point. I've got three minutes to waste on a, on a carport well, now. Well, you've got three minutes if you wish to use them. Well, you Mayor, you're, you're, are you half? timing me now? I am. OK, well, you shouldn't be, because you're interrupting me. So C continue, the, point, the point is this, Councillors. Um, this is very important to those to the people at number 44, Chinder Road, but it's relatively unimportant. Uh, in, the, in the scheme of things. Now, if you take a look at the report, you'll notice nobody objected. And um, when I went to uh, 44 Jinder Road to take a look, what I found was that, um, say, newly, either a newly constructed house or a newly thoroughly refurbished house. Um, so it all, all looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, the owners have got two cars, plus they have a trailer with um, sporting equipment on it. And it um, seemed entirely reasonable to me that uh, they would want to keep their three um, vehicles uh, undercover. So it's a very modest carport, and uh, no one's objecting to it. And uh, there's a perfectly good functional reason for it. It's not in any way unsafe, and I don't think anyone at all in Kungamai would object to it, uh, or anyone else in the city as one for that matter. So it surprises me that anyone's opposed to it. So, so councillors, uh, I urge you to support this carport in Kungamai. Thank you. Councillor Catalano is the seconder. Uh, thank you. Well, I'm going to be quite interested to hear um, about the opposition to this one because, um, well, we've heard there's no opposition from anyone in Coongamaya, anyone that lives next door, anyone in the street. Um, Coongamaya is it's a suburb that's not very well um, provided for in terms of public transport. People need their cars. They've got to drive to and from the suburb to get to the train station, to get to anywhere else, Midland, uh, up the hills or wherever they're going. And the other thing about Coongamaya is they've got very large blocks and um, a carport is really, really not going to uh, be an unusual um, building 
an unusual uh, expectation, um, given that the blocks are large and um, the suburb is um, so far away from uh, uh, public transport. So um, it's going to be very interesting to hear why there should be any opposition to this. Thank you, Speaker. Against the motion, Councillor Bowman, thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillors, uh, it's pretty easy, Councillors. I'm looking at the professional advice that the staff have given who provide proper planning. Um, we probably should be asking ourselves why it's even come to us in the first place, and perhaps that's because of the way councillors react. Uh, Mr Mayor, let me quote, because I don't want to get it wrong. Officers put it very succinctly. The variation to the street setback would have an in adverse impact on the streetscape and dwelling, and there's no other carports in Jinder Road that have a one metre street setback. Accordingly, the proposed carport would be inconsistent with the prevailing streetscape. Another paragraph. Even if the front yard were to be landscaped, city staff considered that the one metre proposed front setback for the carport would have a detrimental impact on the prevailing streetscape and does not meet the relevant designs of the Arcos. Let me just, in case no one was listening, you might have switched off, does not meet the relevant design Arcos. Mr Mayor, what it looks like is totally irrelevant. Mr Mayor, uh, about if the suburb is being provided for, is totally irrelevant when it comes to planning condition. Mr Mayor, I, the only thing I've heard is the large blocks. Well, if it's a large block, it's easier to comply. Mr Mayor, it's time we start following the professional advice. This is a carport. It shouldn't even be on this agenda. And for to, to actually take it out to debate it and waste three minutes, I will keep it at that. Thank you. Speaker for the motion. Any other speakers for or against the motion? Councillor Johnson, you have a right to reply. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. How long have I got for this? Is it three minutes? Thank you. You know that. So, uh, Council, so I think uh, Councillor Bowman knows it would not be on the agenda if um, it were not, if Council did not have the discretion to uh, move an alternate recommendation, which is what I've done. Um, it doesn't meet the archives, but it is only uh, a very modest carport. There's plenty of room to plant trees. Um, we are entitled to um, uh, approve a variation. I'm absolutely convinced that nobody in Kongamai, if this was more widely advertised, would be, um, would, would be opposed to it. And as for the adverse impact, I did go and take a look at it. I understand the officer's professional advice is that it has an adverse impact. But if you're familiar with, with Kongamai, um, it's, it's a new, well, it's a very long established, but it's a changing area. So there are an awful lot of newly built houses, newly refurbished houses, and the people who are moving in have got different requirements to many of the long-standing uh, residents. There are lots of ad hoc modifications to houses in Kongamai. Um, this is not um, this one has come before us. It's not unusual. Um, I think I think it will be just fine. So, councillors, um, uh, we've got people with three uh, three vehicles. Uh, they like somewhere to keep their vehicle, and um, even if we didn't put a patio there, a carport. It would still be a triple crossover. So, councillors, uh, please support my motion. Thank you. Thank you. I'm now going to put that motion. Those in favour? I have Councillor Johnson, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Congerton, Councillor Knight, Councillor Henderson and Councillor McCulloch. That is seven, as there's only 13 councillors here tonight. Seven is a majority. The motion has passed. Do you get all those names? Thank you, Megan. OK, I've got Councillor... If those in favour could just raise your hand again, please. Councillor Johnson, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Congerton, Councillor Knight, Councillor Henderson and Councillor McCulloch. Is that six? six. OK, I'll call for those against. Of Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Predovnik, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Richardson. I correct my first call. There are six for and seven against. The motion is lost. Mr Mayor, I move the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Predovnik, is there anyone against? Do you wish to debate it? No. no. OK, well, I'll put the uh, motion to adopt the officer's recommendation. Those in favour? Of Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Predovnik, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor... Parry, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, 
Councillor Richardson and Councillor McCulloch. Is it that your hand up? No. So that's uh, nine. The motion is passed. Okay, I'll ask those in favour of the motion, I'll call them out again, just so we get the numbers right. So those in favour. Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Predovnik, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor Richardson, that is nine. That is a majority. The officer's recommendation is passed. I have to do my counting skills. Thank you, councillors. Uh, takes us on to the next item. It's uh, item 4.7, illuminated signage. It's on page 511. Uh, it's in uh, James Street, Guildford, and Councillor Predovnik. You're first. Okay, my motion says refuse both the existing Hoang Kim neon sign Hoang Kim neon sign on the patio awning and the under awning sign at lot 123 James Street, Guildford, for the following reasons. A. Both signs are situated among, among an excess or clutter of advertising signage along the property frontage, which distracts from the facade of Tyndale House and is inconsistent with the majority of the clear performance criteria, C, D and E, of the Guildford Conservation Policy. C, to limit the number, scale and pos positioning of advertising signs and to ensure that signs do not crowd the advertiser's message. D, to ensure that advertising signs are in keeping with the scale and character of the building upon which they will be attached and do not detract from the architecture of the building. And E, to ensure that signage associated with heritage places are designed and located in a manner that protects and enhances what is valued about the building or place. B, the design of the large illuminated neon sign that comprises the exist existing Hoang Kim sign on the patio awning is in stark contrast with other signage on commercial properties along James Street and thereby renders it incongruous with the existing built form character. C, the size of the lettering of the large illuminated neon sign that comprises the existing Hoang Kim sign on the patio awning is larger than the 300 millimetres provided for in the Guildford Conservation Policy's acceptable development provisions. D, internally illuminated advertising signs are inappropriate and unacceptable under the Guildford Conservation Policy's acceptable development provisions. Two, advise the applicant owner that the under awning sign should be externally illuminated as to comply with the Guildford Conservation Precinct local planning policy. Three, advise the applicant owner to work with the city staff to ensure their signage is compliant. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Richardson, is there anyone against? There is. Do you wish to debate it? Thank you, Councillor Predovnik. You have three minutes. OK, it's really important to support businesses, but we don't need to sacrifice our Guildford conservation policy in order to do this. The oversized neon sign in this restaurant belongs in Northbridge, not in Guildford. It's too big. It's in stark contrast with the majority of businesses on James Street whose signage lighting complies with the Guildford conservation policy. I ask Council to support my motion that simply redirects the owner to put in a couple of external lights onto the smaller sign under the awning of Hoan Kim's and replace the neon sign with one that also has an external light shining on it. We're not shutting down a business here tonight. We're just tweaking a small aspect of their business, the lighting, on their external signage, and we are tweaking it to make it fit into a policy that, if adhered to, creates a really lovely soft ambience along Guildford's streetscape. Businesses along James Street who comply with their lighting are the Stirling Arms, Rosses, the King and I. The Guildford Library also has external lights shining on its signage at night. There's not a lot of businesses open at night in Guildford, but the majority on James Street have signage that complies with our policy. Businesses who don't comply shouldn't be held up as the standard to follow when Council makes a decision tonight, especially since our Guildford Conservation Policy costs ratepayers 94700 to create and design. Why create a conservation policy and then uphold those who ignore it as the standard? Tonight I'm asking Council to draw a line in the sand to send a strong message to those who are looking to push the boundaries in Guildford. I'm also asking Council to send a strong message to those who rely on us to keep Guildford's planning in alignment with a policy that was only ever created to polish what is a unique crown, a unique jewel in our crown. If we as a council truly believe Guildford is a unique heritage town worth preserving, why wouldn't we send a couple of lights back to the drawing board? My motion is a win-win. It allows Hoang Kim to light up at night, 
just in the right way. It supports the Guildford conservation policy and it upholds a standard we should as a council, especially since our ratepayers have paid for the creation of our policy. Please support my motion. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Richardson as the seconder. I think we've changed that. You've got to speak now. Councillors, tonight I'm voting for Councillor Predovnik's motion to reject the item 4.7, illuminated signage, lot 123, number 207, James Street in Guildford. The application was advertised for public comment and referred to the Guildford Association, the Heritage Council of WA and Main Roads WA. And whilst Main Roads and Heritage Council had no minor or visual impact, the Guildford Association considered the signs to be entirely contrary to the Guildford Conservation Precinct policy. A further submission from the public noted the same. On page 511 in your book, states city staff agree that the size of and the illuminated nature of the neon Hoang Kim sign is incongruous with other commercial signage in the Guildford and inconsistent with the existing built form character as you've already heard. So Oxford Dictionary definition incongruous, not in harmony or keeping with the surroundings or other aspects or something. Policy C106 states the acceptable development provisions require generally that advertising signage should be discreet and complement the building upon which it's placed and not cover important architectural detail. This has already occurred with a freestanding gazebo that was approved by this council that hides the historical facade of Tyndale House and the Guildford Conservation Precinct's policy performance criteria pertaining to advertising signs are in point D on the next page. To ensure that the advertising signs are keeping in keeping with the scale and character of the building upon which they will be attached and do not detract from the architecture of the building. Neon lighting was not used in Guildford between 1829 and 1900. By the late 1920s and 30s, European researchers were doing experiments with neon tubes coated with phosphorus. These findings sparked fluorescent lamp research programs in the US and demonstrations to the US Navy and by 1939, the New York World Fair. They were not here in Guildford. I ask you to please consider that recent letter from the Guildford Association President and former City of Swan Councillor, Mrs. Christine Hughes, who is in the gallery tonight, for the time and effort that they have contributed to what they do in Guildford. I would ask that you apply this letter to both items 4.7 and item 4.8 so as not to have to read it out a second time. The Guildford Association letter stating the acceptable policy standards for lights was sent to all councillors, including the three Midland Guildford ward councillors. And only one councillor, Councillor Predovnik, contacted uh, Mrs Christine Hughes initially. Yeah, one minute left, thank you. I'll cut to the chase. There's a clear issue here with some of our Midland Guildford Ward councillors choosing not to support the council's own uh, City of Swan policy and the Guildford Association, who provide that vital historical input into protecting and preserving that the 19th century iconic heritage town. That period is 1829 to 1900. Councillors, please support Councillor Predovnik to endorse the officer's recommendations not to approve the two Hoang Kim signs. And by doing so, we'll be making it clear as we, as a council, support the City of Swan officer's recommendation and the Guildford Conservation Policy to protect our heritage town. If Councillor Predovnik's motion is unsuccessful, by voting for Councillor Johnson's alternative motion, we'll continue to see ourselves back here in the chamber month after month debating small, silly things like fences, roof colours, paint colours on houses, etc. This is a very time-consuming process for the City of Swan staff and Mr Russell's team and a very costly process for ratepayers as, they need, as the need for City of Swan to engage heritage consultants and advisers and the time spent debating in chambers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, speaker against the motion. Councillor Johnson. Just me then. Sorry, I've got a question from Councillor Congan and then I'll... <coughs> it's not easy when you're not looking this way at the chair. Um, commentary was made by Councillor Richardson in relation to 4.8 that you would hope that you'd only read this out one. We don't have a refuse both recommendation on 4.8. We only have a Councillor Johnson's motion to defer. Yes, what's your question, please? So my question is the probably in the 4.8 deferral, how does that impact 4.7 in refuse both? So 4.7 was to refuse the two neon light signs for Ho and Kim, and 4.8 will be discussed in the next motion. There is a difference. So is another another alternative motion coming up on 
I think uh, maybe Councillor um, Richardson thought that my motion is the officer's recommendation. Is that your question? Clearly your motion, sorry. Clearly your motion through you, Mr Mayor, is for 4.7, but it doesn't touch on 4.8. Thank you, Speaker, against the motion. Councillor Johnson, thank you. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Look, uh, Mr Mayor, I'm opposing this because I think it's unfair to target this particular restaurant on James Street and its neon sign. The Hoan Kim Vietnamese restaurant and uh, the item at 4.8 uh, have each been complained about by a member of the public, but not other neon and internally lit signs nearby. They have not been complained about. So it's one person complaining about two relatively new signs. There are other neon advertising signs in Guildford, two large and neon signs on Alfred's on James Street, and a neon sign on Cappy's restaurant on Swan Street. Uh, neon signs are not specifically forbidden under the existing local planning policy Guildford Conservation Precinct. Uh, and of course the Heritage Council were okay with this sign. Now councillors, neon lighting for advertising was patented in 1919 and that's within the colonial heritage period of Guildford, which our City of Swan planning policy says is from 1829 to 1930. It's possible, but not likely, that neon signs were in Guildford from 1919, but even if there were such historical neon signs, they could not have survived as evidence to inform today's era of conservation, to allow them to be incorporated in today's, into today's planning policy. There's no evidence that, uh, that they were either there or not there, but it's reasonable to assume that they could have been. There are numerous internally lit signs in Guildford, and I think it's unfair that these two businesses have been singled out by just one person complaining. Why not complain about all the other signs? And who, why, not, why are more people in Guildford not complaining? The simple answer is they're not. The other signs are 100 Terrace Road LED sign, Cappy's Neon sign, Chateau Guildford sign, which is internally lit, Rose and Crown internally lit, Local Mio on the back of the Guildford Hotel is, I think, an LED sign. Alfred's has got two neon signs, and the Stirling Arms does have an internally lit sign. It's the Thirsty Camel sign, and it also says Stirling Arms on it. So... There are quite a few. Now, the Hoang Kim's neon sign is only a modestly electrically lit neon advertising sign. You have one minute left, thank you. Uh, I've got a bit to go, Mr Mayor, so I thought it's all right. I'll get on with it. The staff have recommended approving the... In so, approving this modestly modest sign does not involve demolition of a heritage building or doing any heritage damage at all. The staff have recommended approving the internally lit under awning sign. When considering how to proceed with this item, I got out my copy of Dennis McLeod's WA Planning Law Handbook and I was struck by the section on matters council members should consider being fairness and natural justice. In my view, the best way forward is to defer both 4.7 and 4.8 and review the draft Guildford Heritage Area Planning Policy on illuminated signs before making a decision. I think this would be fair. As I said earlier, it's unlikely that illuminated advertising signs would have survived from before 1930 or 1945 Businesses come and go, technology changes, and electrically lit signs are franchise items. I've just got one paragraph. One illuminated sign has survived from 1901 to prove the principle that internally lit signs did exist in the colonial heritage era, and that's the Guildford Post Office clock tower that is internally illuminated at night. So this is an example that this kind of thing was done back in the, in the 1900s. Now, this is the reason why I'm proposing to defer this item and 4.8 to allow a review of what heritage commercial lighting should look like in Guildford. Thank you. Thank you. It's a long paragraph. Speaker for the motion. Question. Question. Councillor Bowman. Three, Mr Mayor, to staff. Councillor Johnson referred to Alfred's. Uh, am I correct that we got advised at the forum uh, that that would have been prior to the policy and some other businesses also? Through Mr Mayor, that's effectively what was stated at the forum, that uh, there's no record of an approval for the Alfred's neon sign, <clears throat> and it's quite likely that the Alfred's neon sign was in situ prior to the 1991 policy. And Mr Mayor, through you again, if, with your indulgence, another question um, to the staff. Uh, Councillor Johnson referred to a whole lot of other businesses, um, saying it's not fair. Is our process now that planning staff will contact each one of those businesses that Councillor Johnson uh, raise uh, to ensure that compliance? Through Mr Mayor, it's my opinion that uh, um, in terms of equity that if we're going to take issue with two signs then we ought to then roll out uh, um, and require that everyone else that has existing 
internally illuminated signs apply and, uh, and that they all be dealt with um, through the application process. We will assess each on its merits, yes. Thank you. Speaker for the motion. Any other speakers for or against the motion? Then Councillor Bradovnik, your right to reply. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to say that a deferral, there's no point deferring this item because the new policy also doesn't support the current lighting. Both the new and old policies reject this. So this deferral, I think, is just not a good course of action. I agree that there's a relatively small amount of businesses that don't comply with the lighting rules that are in the Guildford Conservation Policy. I agree with that. I don't know if they don't comply because just like the two businesses on the agenda tonight, they didn't bother looking into the policy, didn't bother to try to find out what the rules are, or if they don't comply because they set up their businesses before the year the policy came into effect. And Alfred's is an example of this. Whatever their reason is, there's no reason for council to ignore its own policy. To those who are highlighting all the businesses who don't comply with our Guildford policy, to you I ask, why would you hold up these non-compliant businesses as the standard for council to follow tonight? Why aren't you holding up the conservation policy, a policy ratepayers have sunk almost $95,000 into as the benchmark for what should be approved? How can the City of Swan celebrate the heritage listing of Guildford on one hand and then on the other hand hold up those who don't comply to, their, uh, to our heritage policy as the standard when we make council decisions? What message does that send to our community? Both the business community and residents expect council to uphold its own policy. The idea that we create a policy, ask people to comment and then just ignore that policy and cherry pick what parts we stick to sends mixed messages and just confuses people. Policies are only ever created to benefit a whole community and to support good and orderly planning. In the case of lighting, it creates a uniform ambience in, Guilf in Guildford. So why would we vote against our own policy? Tonight we have an opportunity to send the right message to people who have complied with the Guildford Conservation Policy and there's a lot of business owners and residents who have. And the way to send that message is to support them and confirm to them they made the right decision to follow our rules. As a council, we need to lead by example and voting to uphold the policy is the only way to provide certainty to residents and business owners. It also fires a warning shot to those planning to ignore the rules. I'm asking Council tonight to reward people who have done the right thing and encourage everyone to find out what the rules are and to follow them in the future. You have one minute left, thank you. Please support my motion. And just on a quick note um, that uh, the planning staff, I've had a chat to the planning staff and absolutely there's discussions in the, in the pipeline about uh, retrospective approval of other signage and going through and just ensuring that there's more compliance. That's a discussion that's definitely been had. Thank you. I'm now going to put the motion. Those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Predovnik, Councillor Congerdon, Councillor Parry, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor Richardson and Councillor McCulloch. I make that 10. The motion is passed. Against were myself, Councillor Johnson, Councillor Catalano, which is 13, which is the right numbers. Thank you. Which now takes me to uh, item 4.8 on page 6 of your running sheet. And it's Councillor Johnson. It's on page 522, Councillors. It's illuminated sign is James Street Guildford, but a different sign. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, my motion is that Council vote resolve to defer a decision on the illuminated signs until after the draft Guildford uh, Local Heritage Area poli Planning Policy is approved. Two, to request the CEO to review section 8.11.2 signage in the draft policy to consider the merits of internally lit, externally lit and neon signs in the historical context of Guildford, noting that there are numerous examples of internally lit, externally lit and neon signs in Guildford today. The Edison pattern for incandescent light was filed in the in 1879 within the colonial heritage area of Guildford. A US patent for neon lighting was issued in 1919, also within the colonial heritage area of Guildford. Three, the reason for the motion is that the Guildford heritage policy is under review and it is not equitable to consider this retrospective application under the new, until the new policy is approved. Thank Point you. of order, Mr Mayor. 6.1a of the meeting procedure local law. Can I get a second of first, please, Councillor Bowman? Well, that's the point of order on that motion itself. Oh, hang on, can you call it out again? Because I was just about to write down a second. Yep. It's 6.1a of the meeting procedure local law. Well, just let me look that up, thank you. 
where possible. I'm happy to read it out, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you, if you could do that. It requires two business days before where possible, and as such, uh, uh, you'd have to indicate or find out why it wasn't possible. And considering that we've actually adjourned our meeting for a week, uh, I can't understand why it wouldn't be possible, and therefore my understanding is you have to rule it out of order. Uh, thank you. Um, it says where possible. And I'm uh, happy to accept the motion uh, once I get a seconder. So I'll rule uh, your um, point of order out of order. So do I have a seconder for this item? Councillor Knight? Is there anyone against? You wish to debate it? Yep. We do. Thank you. Councillor Johnson, you've got three minutes for your debate. Thank you. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, Councillors, when looking at what would be a fair outcome for this item, uh, I did a drive around Guildford on Sunday evening to be informed about electrically lit signs. There are a number of externally lit signs and a number of internally lit signs. There are also a number of disused older internally lit signs, including a 1970s uh, sign on the Padbury building and two even older signs on the Cafe Strip. Until recently, there was a disused electrical sign on the roof of the Woodbridge Hotel. The internally lit signs in current use are the ones I read out earlier. Uh, plus there's a Woodbridge uh, Hotel advertising sign which is internally lit. With the exception of local Mio and the 100 and Terrace Road and the two that we're discussing tonight, these are long established businesses. After observing that the Guildford Post Office clock tower was internally lit and it dated from 1901, well within the contributory period of both the Guildford, con the Guildford policy and the draft policy, it seemed to me that it was feasible that there were internally lit advertising signs in Guildford prior to 1930 or 1945. Those are the dates of our policy. So the draft policy is 1945. The current policy is 1930, not 1900. Of course, this depends on when electric power was first developed in Guildford, and I don't have an answer to that. Incandescent light, as I explained earlier, was patented in 1879, and neon advertising signs not long after. It's therefore possible there were electrically lit advertising signs in Guildford during the period of the conservation policy. Would these signs have been internally lit or externally lit? Well, looking at the example of the post office 1901 clock, it's certainly realistic to assume that the concept of internally lit advertising signs is possible at that date. Given the likely fragility of early electric light bulbs, you would expect that the electrical illumination would be enclosed to weatherproof it, and that points to the use of internal illumination during the heritage period. If such early electrical advertising signs did exist, they are not likely to have survived into today's era of heritage conservation as evidence as a result of changing business ownership, changing technology, rendering the signs obsolete, and the fragility and lack of durability of the signs. You have one minute left, thank you. The same reasoning applies to neon signs, which date from 1919, also within the heritage period. The realistic possibility that internally lit signs and neon signs existed during the colonial heritage era is why I'm suggesting that the draft signage policy is reviewed and we ask the CEO to look at the history of advertising signs in the area to determine if we have this draft policy correct. Once we have established a fact-based heritage policy on illuminating advertising signs, then we can revisit any unapproved signs in Guildford. This is why I'm suggesting deferral of this item, to be fair to all, including all those other businesses in Guildford that uh, have um, neon signs, internally lit signs and uh, externally lit signs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Second, Councillor Knight. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I don't have much to add. Just that uh, it seems reasonable to, dis uh, to support this motion, to defer this, so that um, the, the city can work with the applicants and and maybe the Guildford Association in uh, uh, going forward to get this policy right. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Against the motion, Councillor Bowman. Mr Mayor, when I woke up yesterday morning, I was deciding what I was having for breakfast. Obviously, Councillor Johnson decided that he was a good idea to defer an item, and hence the reason we got an email at 5.24 yesterday on it. Mr Mayor, I quite like this sign, but then I realised it's not what I like. It's what the policy says, um, and that's what I'm deciding on, what the policy says. And the policy says that shouldn't be allowed. I'm not going to go back and debate everything else. We heard it on the last item. Um, so quite uh, frankly, Mr Mayor, what I like and what I don't like is totally irrelevant. It's what the policy actually says, and the policy says no. Thank you. Speaker, for the motion. 
Speaker against the motion. Councillor Richardson. Thank you, Mr Mayor and Councillors. This is the second time tonight we are now debating small issues in Guildford that could easily be resolved with the matrix form. A tick off list through the planning department whereby we do not have to make these decisions as councillors. It shouldn't also fall back on the Guildford Conservation, uh, sorry, the Guildford Association to be pinpointed by the community as to whether or not they were compliant or not. It should stop here at the council and only come unless it's significant. In relation to Councillor Johnson's argument, I cannot support a deferral on a decision to wait until the conservation policy is passed. Why on earth would I request the CEO to review a section of signage when the CEO is leaving? Why would I put that on the CEO for it to then hold off for a few months and rehash it with a new CEO down the line? The cost and the waste of doing that through staff is ridiculous. The cost to ratepayers for us to come back and hash this out on another Wednesday night. I've got the president of the Guildford Association sitting in the gallery tonight. They do not support a deferral on this item. They do not want to go back and see if the conservation policy is changed later on. They have stated tonight and they sent out a letter and I sent it to all councillors tonight. It's quite a long letter. It's a three page letter, if anyone had a quick squeeze over it, that was handed to residents in Guildford. It's from the Guildford Association. It clearly states Guildford's significance as a rare and relatively intact 19th century town with its critical period of development between 1829 and 1900. That is what we are upholding in Guildford. That is what you want to see in the streetscape through Guildford. We do support the buildings in 1945, but we are, it is here in black and white from the association in their time that we are going to uphold and it begins tonight. We say no, we work with the owners, we make them aware of the policies, yeah, and we make sure they comply. Anyone, Councillor Johnson, can look up and Google when were light globes invented. It's pretty quick on Google. But if you had any knowledge of heritage and experience, you would seek the knowledge from local and heritage people and research. The research was provided to me from the Guildford Association. A few facts on Guildford's electric supply. Despite what was happening in the rest of the world, or even WA, Guildford did not get electricity nor lighting until late in the piece. In fact, after Perth, Fremantle and Midland, Guildford still had kerosene lamps, street lamps in 1909. West Australian, 819-1909, page 6. The first electricity and limited and irregular supply came from the Midland Council in 1909. This supplied street lighting and lighting to some homes. The Western Mail, happy to give you all references later on. By 1911, there were 320 Guildford consumers connected, including the Guildford Municipal Council. However, the irregularities in power supply caused many problems. Western Australian. <laughs> WM Pabry had his own electric plant to run his mill and generate lighting Thank at you. his that stores is your and power three minutes. his flour mill in 1908. Thank you, Councillor Please, councillors, I ask you to not support this deferral. Thank you. Any other speakers for or against? OK, I'll ask for a speaker for first. No, Councillor Predovnik, you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, council, please uh, reject this deferral. Uh, tonight, I ask Council to support the officer's recommendation because it gets the balance right and it supports the Guildford Conservation Policy. The new policy can take 12 months to come back to Council, so a deferral is just going to kick the can down the road. Both the new and old policies currently reject this lighting. So, in effect, this deferral asks Council to turn a blind eye to the fact this business did not bother to find out about and comply with the Guildford Conservation Policy. And the owners are open about the fact they didn't look at the rules. So, should we reward them by allowing them to do something they probably wouldn't have done if they'd contacted city staff in the early stages? The rules about signage don't change in the new draft policy, so the officer's recommendation won't change. It will still support the Guildford Conservation Policy. And tonight, I want Council to consider the true cost to consider what does it cost the city of Swan when we spend almost $95,000 on a conservation policy, send that policy out for public comment, create a policy based on that feedback and then proceed to ignore our own policy. I put to you that it cost us our credibility when we claim to value Guildford as a unique heritage town. I put to you it cost us our reputation when we are perceived as continually turning a blind eye to businesses and residents who don't comply with the policy and when we reward those businesses by giving approval retrospectively. 
to lighting that doesn't comply in the streetscape of a heritage town we profess to value, what does that say about our commitment to our unique heritage town? Tonight we have an opportunity to support the officer's recommendation. It gets the balance right and it sends the right message to our community. We can easily send these owners back to the drawing board. We can easily ask them to get creative and come up with a sign that complies with our policy. Please reject this motion in support of the officer's recommendation, in support of our staff who have spent countless hours working on this policy and in support of our ratepayers who have paid almost $95,000 for this policy. Let's show leadership and send the right message to our community tonight. Thank you. Any other speakers for or against? No other speakers. You're right to reply. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Thank you, councillors. I never thought this would get so emotional, but uh, I see some people have got strong feelings. Look, let's just uh, correct a few things here. Uh, the GA has a policy which states that um, it thinks that heritage goes up to 1900, but that's the Guildford Association's policy. Our city policy says that uh, the heritage period extends to 1930, and the new policy says it extends to 1945. So we need to be looking at what was current and appropriate during that time frame. And as Councillor Richardson has pointed out, I didn't know this until tonight, Guildford had uh, electric light in 1911, which probably explains the uh, illuminated, uh, internally illuminated sign of the post office. Um, councillors, the rusty boat, which is what we're debating here, the rust, this has been raised, the rusty boat uh, sign is a series of um, light bulbs that are behind uh, perspex, transparent perspex. It's hardly internally illuminated. If they took the uh, transparent perspex off, this, this sign would be completely compliant. It's just weatherproofing. So, uh, councillors, if this, if this business... What's your point of order, please, Councillor um, Richardson? I walked past the sign on Saturday and took photos, and there's no perspex over the front of those uh, metal letters. It's just globes. I've got a photo on my phone as well. In that case, it's oh, well, I'm not... I don't know either way. Sometimes you can look through perspex or glass and don't know you're looking through it, but uh, I, I don't think that's the main bone of contention. Uh, it may or may not have perspex. Councillor Johnson, if you can proceed may on the basis not. that it doesn't, thank look, you. Uh, if it doesn't, then it's compliant in my view. Um, look, councillors, they didn't look at the rules, but neither did anybody else. So it appears to me that there's a, a continuing stream of uh, pre-policy precedent that says that internally lit signs are a valid thing in Guildford. So therefore, this, it's reasonable to reconsider the policy. It's only a draft policy. We're only looking at one tiny part of one tiny section of it, and that is illuminated signs. And now, as it is still in draft, is the perfect time to do it. That's the purpose of, um, of this deferral, is to give time to look at it and find out what, the pe what do the businesses want, what do the people in Guildford want, and what is the, uh, the actual history of uh, illuminated signs. So that's the reason for the deferral, councillors. I'm just trying, to be, uh, just trying to be realistic here. And uh, it's interesting that um, this particular aspect of Guildford is being held to such a high standard, but when we're looking at buildings and other things, we're voting in different directions. So it's only illuminated science councillors, and there are lots of them out there. Thank you. I'm now going to put the motion. Those in favour? I have Councillor Johnson, Councillor Catalano, myself, Councillor Knight, and Councillor McCulloch, which is five. The motion is lost. Everyone else was against, which must be... Eight. So those against are Councillor Bowman, Councillor Podovnik, Councillor Congerton, Councillor Parry, Councillor... Against the motion. Against the motion, yes. OK, Councillor Jones has now got a hand up. If you can keep it up while I do the count, please. So against the motion is Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Podovnik, Councillor Congerton, Councillor Parry, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson and Councillor Richardson, which is eight, eight against. Um, so the motion is lost, five to eight. I'll move the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Had the officer's recommendation moved by Councillor Bowman, seconded by Councillor Bradovnik. Is there anyone against? You wish to debate it? Is it no? No one wishes to debate it. I'm now going to put the officer's recommendation. Those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Podovnik, Councillor Congerton, Councillor Parry, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson and Councillor Richardson, which I believe is nine. The motion is passed. Everyone else was against, which would be four. 
Thank you, councillors. That now takes us to the next item, item 5.2, proposal for the city to manage Western Australian Planning Commission owned lots on Devon Street, Woodbridge, Councillor Predovnik. Uh, the council, so my motion is that council rules 021 direct the CEO to make a formal request from the city to transfer lots 01234.12 and 178 Devon Street, Woodbridge to the state of WA to enable a Crown Reserve to be created that could be vested to the city. Two, take all necessary steps to obtain a management order from the State Government for the seven lots, 5,424 5, metres in area. Three, ensure the city engages with the Friends of Woodbridge Bushlands Group throughout this process to support good educational, environmental and social outcomes for the community. The reason for changing the officer's recommendation, one, the WAPC has indicated it would be willing upon receiving a formal request from the city to transfer the land to the state of WA to enable a reserve to be created that could be vested to the city. Two, the creation of a Crown Reserve with a management order would be consistent with the current zoning of the site as parks and recreation under the Metropolitan Region Scheme. Three, the land is proposed to be managed by a Friends of Woodbridge Bushland Group who will be able to obtain grants from the State Government to care for the site, alleviating maintenance costs for the city. Four, a petition with 180 signatures was presented to Council in 2018 to protect this wildlife corridor. Five, a management order will enable the Swan community to learn more about local native species, flora and fauna, and rehabilitate the land so quenda and echidna populations can be protected and longer-term native habitat restored. Six, the group are in discussions with Trillion Trees, TAFE, local high schools and primary schools to partner with them and undertake environmental and educational projects, which a management order will enable. Seven, currently the engagement of schools and TAFE is limited and there are restrictions on what grants can be obtained and what educational and environmental projects can be done on the site without a management order. Eight, provide the long-term security required for rehabilitation of the site. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Knight, is there anyone against? There is. Do you wish to debate it, Councillor Henderson? Thank you. Councillor Podovnik, you have three minutes to open your debate. Tonight, Council has a terrific opportunity to support a group of residents who have been volunteering countless hours rehabilitating a wildlife corridor they say can be used to educate, motivate and collaborate with our local schools and community. We've heard a lot about their vision what they want to achieve on the site, and the fact what they currently can do on the site is limited because it's currently managed by the WAPC. But if the City of Swan took over a management order, it would open up a whole new world of possibility, possibilities and funding grants. The only issue the City has raised is the possible cost if the City would need to pay if the Friends Group disbanded. That possible cost was calculated as approximately $14,400. When I asked staff to provide a breakdown of that cost, they confirmed they had calculated that cost as staff hours to do the maintenance work. So in effect, we don't need to find an additional 14400 Technically, it will be included in a workload staff are already paid to do. But if we did want to find the additional funding, we can. The WAPC confirmed the City of Swan could apply for grant funding to help with maintenance cost which is what local governments tend to do when the WAPC transfers land over to its management. I had a chat to someone at the WAPC because I was really curious as to see what, uh, what could be done here. And I was told technically it won't cost the City of Swan anything to manage the site if it contacts the WAPC and applies for an area assistance grant. So we have a passionate group of volunteers who will source grant funding for their environmental and educational projects and the WAPC spokesperson who I spoke to, who said the WAPC is willing and able to provide grant funding if the City of Swan, to the City of Swan if needed. That's what they do to local governments across the board. So this is a win-win for the City of Swan and the community. Please support this motion. Thank you. Councillor Knight as a seconder. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, look, I'll agree. This is a, a great initiative uh, and I hope it's one that will um, be a, repeated. I hope that we can uh, find other areas uh, across the city that... Um, can be used for this uh, rehabilitation. It, it fits in well with the, uh, the, the urban forest canopy plan that um, we adopted uh, last week. Um, and it also fits in with uh, Councillor McCulloch's um, motion tonight about the black cockatoos, uh, the nesting and the, and the, the watering stations. Um, and I think it's good to get behind our, um, our, our volunteers and um, by doing this, we're, we're uh, putting a, our belief in them and respect um, to them and, and to um, uh, and taking ownership of these areas. So, 
Yes, let's support this motion, please. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker against the motion. Councillor Henderson. Councillors, um, I'm sure we'd all love to take on every spare bit of bushland that's available out there, and I'm sure um, uh, we'd love to uh, pour uh, infinite amounts of dollars into making them viable. There's one fundamental problem. Uh, our ratepayers haven't got infinite dollars. And um, uh, as much as I'd love to see us uh, do these things, uh, there's got to be a point where we say to the state, well, it's your land. You look after it. You provide all of these things and we'll have a happy community. We'll have our tree canopy where all of the um, animals uh, uh, that fly around or live in the ground will be able to um, flourish. Frankly, um, this WAPC would love to offload this to us, and I stress offload to us. And that's the point. Um, page uh, 575, last paragraph. It says, uh, taking on these additional lots would add to the city's asset portfolio and further burden to the city's ability to maintain its existing assets. Well, we're going to effectively have only a small number of dollars, so it means our other assets are going to be uh, deteriorating as a result. Or we turn around and we find more ratepayer dollars, more rate increases to be able to service it. The state um, say, well, they'll give us some grant funding. Well, you know, I've been a bit grumpy about the state's uh, um, grant funding lately. Um, I think a fire station cost us $2 million where it shouldn't have. I think... Um, a, um, a youth centre cost us millions uh, for a, um, a state government promise. The point is they make the, these um, offers about grant funding but they're always miles short and our ratepayers have to pick it up. Frankly, the WAPC should be doing everything that um, Councillor Predobnik is asking for here, everything, uh, and they should be doing more for our um, wildlife corridors our bush forever sites are neglected by the state uh, and, um, frankly, um, uh, they should do more, as I said. So yep. I, I can't support you this. You have one minute left, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, because I think we should be going to the state and saying, come on, you can do better for your community. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Speaker, for the motion. Any other speakers for or against? Councillor Bowman. Mr Mayor, I'd like to move an amendment. That amendment is advised the Friends of Woodbridge... Um, better put my glasses on, sorry. Um, I can't even read my writing. Advise the Friends of, of Woodbridge uh, Bushland Group that Council won't budget for ongoing maintenance costs. Is that an additional uh, part or is it part of uh, something before us? So, Mr Mayor, my amendment is that we advise the Friends of Woodbridge Bush Land Group that Council won't budget for ongoing maintenance costs of this reserve. So is that a point Well, okay, I'm just, I'll just wait for it to go up on the uh, board behind me. Thank you. I'll now ask, is there a seconder? Being no seconder, the amendment lapses. Okay, I'll now ask, are there any other speakers for or against the motion? I'm going to enter the debate and I'll ask the uh, Deputy Mayor to chair the meeting. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't support the uh, motion councillors and the reason I don't support it is for the following. The land is currently under the management of WAPC as you're well aware and the respective group has asked the city to take a management order to allow them to form a friends group on, a, on the site. However there are some justifications used by the group that perhaps aren't uh, fully correct and um, we had a deputation from Miss, um, I forget the lady's name, uh, last week, uh, Lynn Deering. 
Uh, the site can be and is actually being currently managed uh, by a community group uh, while remaining under the management of the WAPC. The group can also receive additional assistance from other organisations such as the Lower Helena Association and the Perth NRM while still remaining under the management of the WAPC. These groups can provide assistance with holding and expending of grant funds should the group be successful with the grant funding, technical support and advice as can also be provided by City of Swan staff and an insurance umbrella support and advice to allow volunteers to conduct activities on the site where appropriate and with the WAPC uh, permission. The group raised the installation last week of uh, benches and tanks on the site not being allowed by the WAPC, uh, just as um, the same vein. Should uh, the uh, reserve be transferred to city management, the group would um, not be able to install benches or tanks uh, or any other equipment without prior approval. And this is not ordinary an activity that friends of groups uh, seek to undertake. There is no binding guarantee that a friend of group uh, commit to main, uh, maintain a location for a certain period of time and conceivably the land thank you conceivably the land could be handed to the city and the group want, uh, could disband in the future and this has happened on previous occasions where we've had friends of groups asking for the city to take over um, swamp lands and assets and then when they disband and we're left to pick up the ongoing maintenance, which is a, um, <coughs> a cost on the ratepayer. So lastly, there is no need for this land to be um, transferred for all those great benefits that Councillor Podovnik um, has highlighted. Uh, the quenders, the birds, all the other animals will be safe. And I've heard Councillor Podovnik say several times tonight, please support the officer's recommendation. And I'll, you've said it several times, Councillor uh, Predovnik. Councillor, please let the, let the mayor Please support the officer's recommendation. So I'll use your own words. Please support the officer's recommendation on this and don't transfer it to the um, City of Swan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're right to reply. Thank you, Councillor Predovnik. It took me a little while to understand what you meant there. <laughs> okay. Look, I'm just going to keep this very brief. Um, we don't need to pour infinite dollars into the site. Uh, it's not going to cost the City of Swan anything if it contacts the WAPC and applies for an area assistance grant. When I rang the WAPC, I did double check the statements and claims that had been made by the group and they did confirm that there were many limitations and the statements that they made were true. So again, transferring the ownership to the City of Swan in this uh, motion will really unlock a lot of opportunities that they wouldn't have if, um, if we didn't do it. They would just be very restricted. All their plans, all their projects, they just wouldn't be able to do them. Um, also, the WAPC did dispute the amount of 14400 In fact, they were quite surprised by that amount. Uh, they said it was a lot less for slashing and general clean-up. It really didn't cost them 14400 Again, I don't think we should make a decision on an if the friendship group disbands. I think they've been around from memory from about 2005. This is a very passionate group of people. They're very committed to this site, have been for over a decade. Uh, they're not going to just suddenly disappear. This is going to accelerate their efforts and it's really going to motivate them and it's going to create something absolutely fantastic for our community. So please support this motion. It's really going to cost us nothing, but it's really going to invest uh, in our community and invest a lot of goodwill as well. Thank you. I'm now going to put the motion. Those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Predovnik, Councillor Johnson, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Congerton, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Richardson and Councillor McCulloch, which is nine. The motion is passed. The four against was myself, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Parry and Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, that takes us to the next item, the annual review of the City's delegation register on page 662. And uh, over to you, Councillor Bowman. Thank you. Question, Mr Mayor. Point of order here. Uh, what's your point of order, Councillor Johnson? Yeah, look, Councillor Bowman here is, is moving a procedural motion that is intended to interrupt another motion. So um, 
I don't think it's appropriate. If you actually look at um, that, the matter lie on the table, and if you look, which is on page 24, it says, uh, and this is my point of order, Mr. Mayor, debate on the substantive motion and any amendment must cease. So it's intended to stop um, debate, drop it, so we can move on to the next item. So we haven't actually started debating anything. So it's really not appropriate to move this. I think what councillor, um, the councillor intends is he intends a deferment. So it, it, this is not appropriate. This is not the proper use of this procedural motion. So just let me clarify, uh, page 24. Page 24, effective carried. So we, we don't do this a lot. It's, this has only been done since Councillor Bowman um, sort of joined council. And it's intended to interrupt debate and stop it and then move on to the next item. Well, we ha we're not debating. We haven't started. We're, we're not in process at the moment. Yes, I'm just trying to find it on my page 24. Well, we haven't started debate, um, and it says debate will resume at the point of interruption, but we haven't had any debate yet, Councillor Johnson, so I'm going to rule your um, point of order out of order. We need to start well, the debate. Yep, yeah, just point of order, Mr. Mayor, that's the point. Um, you, you can't use this procedural motion unless we're actually debating. So it's a procedural motion. It's not being used in, in the manner intended here. So what, what's happening is, in effect, Councillor Bowman is doing a deferment motion, but by doing this uh, inappropriately, he's in effect creating a situation where he's the only one who can speak. So that's, that's not the intention of this procedural motion. It's a procedural motion to break, to break debate. So it's not, not appropriate to move it as an as a alternate motion or as a substantive motion. It's not its intention at all. Thank you. I'm just um, pondering your uh, point of order. I'm rereading the um, procedures uh, where it talks about um, interrupting debate and then the debate resumes at the point of interruption. Um, I'll uphold the uh, point of order. Um, Councillor Johnson, thank you. Uh, Councillor Bowman, do you wish to move another um, motion? Or yes, I do. I wish to move against your ruling and I can explain why if you'd like me to talk about the meeting procedure local law and what they mean. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is, uh, I'll, I'll really admit, this is quite new to me, laying on the table, laying off the table. Uh, it's only been a thing of recent time, so I'm readily admitting I'm not a full bottle, so uh, I'll allow you to explain. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bowman. Um, Mr Mayor. Well, it's a procedural motion, so uh, I'll call for a seconder. Excuse me. Well, it's, said by, it's not... It's he's a... going to... Mr. By Mayor, way can I, of explanation. Can I assist? Let someone move and second something. I'll quickly then jump in and lay it on the table. We'll get the same result, but we've taken two minutes extra wow. plus the five minutes. We've just wasted. Well, well, I need a motion, councillors. What, what was your motion, sorry? My motion is on the run sheet. Are we going ahead with that, or is he doing? Okay, well, thank I you. I need a motion to move forward. So, yes, do you want to move your you. motion? Yes, thank you. That the council resolve to one adopt the delegation of authority register, including council appointed authorised officers, two thousand and twenty two, subject to the following amendment: a delegation sixteen building and demolition permits, condition on delegation sub delegation. This delegation does not extend to the demolition of any building uh, in, yeah, must be in the city of Swan built before 1945. The proposed demolition of any building built before 1945 is to come to council for a determination. And it's actually the proposed demolition permit, should be the proposed demolition permit 
uh, yes, is to come before council before a, de a ter determination to revoke delegation 43 employee separation payments and note that the manage management practice on employee separation payments will continue to be the city's adopted policy until such time as the policy is presented to council for consideration and adoption. Three, endorse the guideline execution of city documents. Four, recur record the reasons for changing the officer's recommendation. Is that, um, well, I, I'm just uh, in my, uh, Amendment just relates to point one. Uh, in relation to point one, uh, uh, the, city, the uh, council has the power to um, make that determination and should make that determination. That's your um, motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? Councillor Johnson. Move a procedural motion that the matter lay on the table. I have uh, a question. Just, just hang on a second. I just want to get down the mover. Second and Councillor Johnson. A uh, yeah, question from Councillor Congerton. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr Mayor, my question is to any one of the staff that can answer. With a, um, a demolition notice, there is a 10-day permit requirement. So this came to council and it exceeded the 10 day permit requirement. What is the consequences of that action? Mr. Vanderlind. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, there is a statutory 10 day approval time under the Building Act, whereby applications that will go over time requires <clears throat> a full refund of application fees. So if, if, if we take longer than 10 days, we need to refund the application fees of such applications. Um, it, it should, however, be noted that that application is not deemed approved or refused, but must wait for a resolution. So after the 10 days, we pay the, the fees back, but still the resolution needs to then take place thereafter. Having said that, <coughs> um, It's, if, if such a practice were to be deployed, then damage to the reputation of the city of Swan amongst the building industry may arise, as it may be perceived as local government adding red tape to a state-driven streamlined process. As you know, the 10-day time periods have been brought in by state government to try and, and fast-track applications. So if we then put something in place where we delay it, 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 it could be perceived negative. Thank you, Councillor Bowman. You are moving a motion. I'm moving it lay on the table. Thank you. I'll ask if I have a seconder. Motion lapsed for a want of a seconder. Uh, is there anyone against Councillor Catalano's motion? Yes. Thank you. You wish to debate it? Yes. Thank you. You have three minutes. Thank you, Councillor Catalano. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, it's a power that... The count, this council has, and it's a, count, it's a power that uh, this council has delegated uh, down to uh, staff, and the power is to issue a demolition permit for uh, somebody that wants to demolish a building in the city of Swan. Now, um, it's not the case that the council... Um, there's, there's only a narrow um, a, a number of grounds on which uh, that uh, demolition permit uh, can be refused. But the point is that um, the city has the power and should re retain the power for buildings prior to 1945 because we have a dwindling stock of... Um, well, let's call them heritage buildings. The older they get, the more they become heritage buildings. The more they reflect our history and our past, the more they provide us with a reference point for us now in the current times and into the future. Uh, we spend an awful lot of time 
talking about heroic Anzacs, but those heroic Anzacs lived in houses, they lived in towns, they lived in communities. And uh, part of what makes up the heroic Anzac is uh, preserving and looking after the hard work that they put into establishing those communities. And these are the communities that we're fortunate to live in. And we have fortunately got some uh, uh, buildings from that era. And so what I'm suggesting is that council retains uh, its uh, um, yeah, one minute left, power to uh, uh, issue the demolition permit. And I hear about um, you know the the uh, difficulty with the administrative uh, situation with the ten days, but that can be dealt with. I'm pretty sure about that. But I want to say that the damage to the reputation of the city is not just about red tape; is also the damage to the city. Uh, when the community perceives that actually it does not respect its past. The community has been asking, and we've heard about that to this tonight, about Guildford. Guildford's not the only place with heritage buildings. The community wants us to retain heritage buildings because it's important to them. That is also goes to the part of maintaining our reputation and keeping our reputation intact. It's not about satisfying just the developer or the building industry. And so there's two sides to that. So I'm suggesting we just take back that power and use that power as an oversight mechanism so we know how many buildings that are Thank older you, than Councilor 1945 Catalano, are going minutes. to be demolished. Thank you. Uh, as a second, to Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, council should certainly uh, retain this power uh, to determine whether buildings prior to 1945 should be demolished. Councillors, um, currently, I, I believe only uh, heritage-listed buildings would come to council for a decision on demolition. But all the way along the old railway line, all the way between uh, Guildford uh, through Midland to Bellevue, with numerous um, houses prior to 1945 that are valued by the community and could potentially be heritage houses. So uh, uh, not every single house that is of value uh, as a heritage house has yet been uh, identified. Um, I think that's, uh, that's well understood. Um, and of course, uh, potentially, um, we're going to be sure that particularly the ones in Bellevue are not going to get uh, demolished. So councillors, so we, we should retain this power. Um, I do not believe it will damage uh, the city of Swan's reputation. And as for this 10-day rule being brought in recently to try to expedite things, it is particularly, apparently, therefore, targeted at those areas with a predominance of houses built before 1945. So it's been, uh, if you like, unequitably, um, it's unequitably tar being targeted at uh, particularly Midland and Bellevue, where there are a lot of houses prior to 1945 which uh, are not protected. So, councillors, um, at this stage, uh, I think we need to protect our older biz buildings, and we need to. This council needs to examine any proposals for demolition. That's why I'm supporting the motion. Thank you. Thank Another you. Another question, Mr. Mayor. Question, Councillor Congerton. Um, could one of the staff please tell me what um, the application fee is for demolition, uh, number one, and number two, how many homes in Guildford have had a demolition licence in the last three, four years? If you can get that off the top Thank of you your head. Thank you, Mr. Van Lind. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, <laughs> the um, application fee is $171 for demolition application. And then um, with regards to demolition applications in, in Guildford, um, I think it's important that I note to Council that, that demolition of, of applications in Guildford and Woodbridge, so those are, are uh, heritage areas under the local t uh, town planning scheme, those Demolition oh, sorry, uh, Leon, uh, my apologies, Mr Mayor. Um, probably Guildford, really. Uh, Midland, ra yeah. sorry, rather than Guildford, thank you. Yeah, Mr Mayor, so for in, in Midland there's been 40 applications in the last five years. That's been two in 2018, 17 in 2019, nine in 2020, seven in 2021, and five to date this year. Um, if I may, just put to council the, the difficulties we can have um, from a practical perspective. <clears throat> so under the, the Building Act, 
the, the Building Act does not consider construction date as a compliance matter for demolition. And therefore, we wouldn't be able to go under the, the um, further information request that, that we are allowed under the Building Act. We won't be able to go back to a client and ask that he, that he has to prove the date of the construction of that house. So we'll have a problem doing that. And then for us to determine when that building was constructed <coughs> will be problematic, as the city's records um, probably only go back to the 1970s. And if you look at, at um, Landgate's information, it jumps in 10-year increments. So we're going to have a problem to identify w w when exactly that building was constructed. So that will put us in a, in a really difficult position to be able to ask for the additional information from, um, from an applicant. And then it is also important to realise that there's an interrelationship between the Building Act, the Planning and Development Act and the Heritage Act. So therefore, heritage buildings that's been identified as heritage buildings under the Planning and Development Act requires development applications and that for, for demolitions, and those development applications come to council. Um, so it's, it's what we're trying to do here is to say 19, buildings prior to 1945 is heritage buildings, but they don't qualify as heritage buildings under the legislation. So we're going to have a real problem to bring that to council and to make any um, uh, uh, recommendation in that regard because they, it simply won't have heritage um, status. Thank you. Speaker against the motion. Councillor Bowman, thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I have a number of amendments. I'll move my first amendment, uh, page 19, delegation 7, uh, to add a condition on subdelegation. Uh, where the increase of lease or licence is no more than 10 per cent from what it was previously. Number seven, page 19, condition of subdelegation. Hopefully, all councillors know what happens when we subdelegate. Uh, but I would like to see another condition on subdelegation that uh, it for via leases or licences only when the increase is no more than 10 per cent. Have you got a page in the hard copy agenda, Councillor Bowman? Yep. 686. 686. I have about 15 of these, so uh, this is my first one, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you. We'll deal with them one at a time. Uh, I'll just let everyone get up to speed, and I've just turned to page 686. I'm just seeing where it fits in. Unfortunately, I can't move to lay it on the table again. No, thank you. OK, thank you. First of all, I'll... Um, I'll take it there's objection from the mover and the seconder? Uh, no, not at all, because it doesn't relate to my amendment. This relates to the delegated, um, the proposed delegated authorities that's in here. That's actually uh, put together by staff. It's nothing to do with my amendment. Thank you. My amendment only relates... Well, you've moved a motion, Councillor Catalano, to adopt the authority register yeah. other than... Uh, I know that, but I'm just explaining that it has nothing to do with my amendment, so I'm not going to oppose it, because yeah. I, I, would, I don't really have a problem with it. Thank you. I'll ask for a seconder to the amendment. Councillor Knight, is there anyone against? You wish to debate it, Councillor Johnson? No. OK, so there's no debate. I'll put the amendment to the vote. Those in favour of the amendment? I have Councillor Bowman, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino and Councillor Henderson and Councillor Congerton, which is five. The amendment is lost. 
nine to uh, sorry eight to five. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move my second amend amendment. It's on page twenty one. Uh, which for those is 688, it is delegation eight, and a condition of subdelegation, uh, no more than $10,000. So that means we're still delegating to the CEO 100,000, but he can't on delegate anything more than 10,000. Uh, so move. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Pardon. Councillor Podovnik. Is there anyone against? There is. Do you wish to debate it? No. Any, anyone else against and wish to debate it? No. Well, then I'll put the amendment. Those in favour? I have Councillor Bowman, Councillor Bradovnik, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino and Councillor Henderson, which is six. The amendment is lost. Do you get all those names, Megan? Or do you want them again? Got them? Everyone else was against. Thank you. Mr Mayor, I'd like to move my next amendment. It's on page 24, which is 691. It's debts write-off, uh, condition on subdelegation, no subdelegation to be allowed. I'll just get it up onto the board. So that would mean only the CEO does the write-offs, which is pretty easy. It's just a memo and he signs it. I ask if there is a seconder. Councillor Catalano. Is there anyone against? Do you wish to debate it, Councillor Johnson? Does anyone wish to debate the item? Then I'll put the item. Those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Congerton, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino. Councillor Henderson and Councillor Richardson, which is eight. That amendment is passed, eight to five. You've got all the names, thanks, Megan. Thank you. Next one, thank you, Councillor Bowman. Mr Mayor, page 25, 692 is reduction of waiver of fees, a good addition on subdelegation. Uh, no staff are to reduce or waive fees that they or their immediate family belong to that club. Thank you. I'll just wait for it to go up on the board. Mm -hmm. Can we clarify, is it an immediate family member? Uh, haven't we got a definition under it's defined. Our, um, it's defined in the Act. Mm -hmm. As defined in the Act? Uh, Okay, we can put that there as defined, defined in the Act. Yep. Yeah, close associations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll ask. Sorry, yes, Councillor Congerton. The reference to is is a member of the club. Yep. Have you, have you explained that, Mr. Mayor, if you'd like. Thank you. Uh, through Mr. Mayor and councillors, uh, you'll <coughs> note that the CEO has subdelegated. Um, has been exercised. We don't know to what staff because we don't get that information. Uh, and it actually talks about what they can reduce or waiver, which is fees. Uh, if I am a football club, if I'm a member of a staff and I'm a football club asking for a waiver and my son works there, that staff member should not be dealing with that waiver. Thank you. For the explanation. Thank you. I'll ask, is there a seconder? Councillor Knight. I'll ask if there's anyone against. You wish to debate it? Yes, I do want to say something about the motion. Oh, okay. Well, if you wish to debate it, Councillor Bowman, you have three minutes. Thank you. Fantastic, Mr. Mayor. I thought it would be a while before I got to speak. <laughs> Councillors, all I'm doing is making sure that the delegations we give provide some security and safety. Councillors, Number 50, and that's all we're talking about at the moment, reduction of waiver of fees. We don't know what the delegation has to staff. We don't know how many staff the CEO is delegated to and if he's put any limitations on it. Because we don't get that information and we're actually technically not entitled to it. So I think there's a little bit of confusion there from earlier debate that I heard. Uh, but councillors, 
The pub test. If I am a staff member and I have delegation to waiver a fee or charge, the hire of a clubhouse for the footy bingo night, do you think I should be allowed to deal with it? The answer would have to be no. I'm saying make sure we've got that in the on delegation to make sure that does not happen. I'd hope it would never happen. I'd hope we wouldn't have to put it in there. But unfortunately, a lot of times, if things aren't in writing, things do happen. And that's just one of the many changes that I think we need to do with our delegations to strengthen it. Thank you. Councillor Knight as a seconder. Uh, nothing to add, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker against the motion. Question. Um, question. Uh, sorry, I've got a question yes. from Councillor Yeah, just a, a question. First. Surely a staff member would have to declare an interest if they were a member of a club. Is, is that correct or incorrect? Miss Lay. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, it would be covered under the City's Code of Conduct for employees that if they are conflicted by a decision that they need to make, they need to make their direct supervisor aware of that situation. Thank you. Councillor Catalano. Um, actually, I'm quite happy with it now because it's changed since um, I originally, it originally went up on the board. There was a whole lot of... Um, extra information, unless I miss something, sorry, but... Um, thank you, I'll ask... Is it said at the time when I posed it, I'll the ask club. If a, thank you. I'll ask if there's a speaker against the motion. Sorry, yes, I'm... Sorry, I'm against the motion. You wish to speak? No, I don't. Thank okay. You. Well, then I'm going to put the motion. Those in favour? I have Councillor Bowman, Councillor Bradovnik, Councillor Catalano, myself, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson and Councillor Richardson. That is eight. The amendment is carried. Eight to five. Did you get all the names? Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Uh, next one. Thank you, Councillor Bowman. Mr Mayor, my next amendment is on page 697. It's page 30. It's number 39, appointment of designated employees. Um, and I would like to see that uh, delegation deleted. Happy to explain. Uh, well, I'll ask if there's a second or first. Councillor Podovnik. Anyone against? There is. You wish to debate it? Okay. Um, anyone wish to debate it, councillors? Now I'm going to put the amendment. Uh, those in favour? of Councillor Bowman, Councillor Podovnik, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Knight. That is four in favour. The amendment is lost. Four to nine. Mm -hmm. uh, ten. No, nine. nine. Four to nine. Next one, thank you, Councillor Bowman. Mr Mayor, it is page 32, page 699. It's number 49. And Mr Mayor, I'd like to see a change so it actually uh, is the right delegated power. Uh, it is section 5120 instead of 5103, but be happy to be guided by governance advice because that's just my views. So you're saying it's 5.120? Uh, yes, Mr Mayor, appointment of authorised complaint officer uh, in my little green book when I look at section 5120, that's what it states. 5.103 is talking about code of conduct and the this item is appointment of authorised complaints officer, but happy to be proven wrong. Uh, thank you all. I'll have to take some uh, guidance. Through thank you. you. Um, Mr Mayor, I don't have the answer at this point in time. I would have to take it on notice. Thank you. We're just checking now. Thank you, Councillor Bowman. Just bear with us for a moment. Thank you, councillors. Uh, Could we have uh, Councillor Bowman read out uh, section 5.120? We have don't have a copy of the text in front of us, so and no means of accessing. Have you got a copy in front of you, Councillor Bowman? Mr Mayor, uh, I'm a councillor. I probably shouldn't be giving governance advice, so okay. um, it's probably best right. for the staff Ms. to read Ms. out. Ms Lay's just looking it up. And could you read it out to us, please, Ms. Lee? Well, once we find it, thank you, Councillor Catalano, we will. Five point 
2020 is the complaints officer. Thank you. Uh, uh, sorry. Can, can we have a look at the text for 5.120, please? We'll just have to go to the right page. It's uh, an act about that thick, so we've just got to get to the right page. Thank you, Councillor Catalano. Mr Mayor, can I just suggest we actually agree now we should lay it on the table till after the break. The reason why is because of the fact we did not know these 15 amendments were coming through. I think it's wildly inappropriate to make decisions on the run we're from a government's perspective and I think we should bring it back after the break when we get all I mean, amendments we're about through. halfway or more through. Uh, well, Council. now we think we're going well, further and further into the rabbit hole, and we're not sure. No, we're going to continue. Thank you, Councillor Parrott. Thank you. It's on the screen for you all to read. So, section five point one two zero deals with complaints officer. It may have been incorrectly uh, previously recorded. So, I've got a mover in Councillor Bowman. I have a seconder, Councillor Congerton. Is there anyone against? I've got a question at this point. What is 5.103? I mean, if we remove it, it may have some unintended side effect without also checking that. It's codes of conduct. Yeah, I've got a question here, Mr Mayor. It says here, 5.103, every local government is to prepare or adopt a code of conduct to be observed by council members, committee members and employees. So we still need to delegate 5.103. That needs to be delegated as well. Otherwise, the CEO has got to do all the work. Yes. Um, so your uh, amendment, we can go back to the amendment. Thank you. The advice from the acting CEO is she believes Councillor Bowman is correct. So that's the only advice I can give you, Councillor Johnson. So I have a mover, I have a seconder. I'll ask, is there anyone against the amendment? You wish to debate it? Nothing. Don't wish to debate it, Councillor Johnson? I'll need to move an amendment, Mr Mayor, because I, I think we're doing the wrong thing here. I think we need to leave in 5.103 because we need to delegate that. So I think we need to be adding in 5.120 as a power delegated. Yes, it's 5.3, uh, you Mr Mayor. Thank you, Ms Lay is going to adjudicate. Through you, Mr Mayor, 5.103 requires you to have a model code of conduct for your council and then 5104 mm. is the council's requirement to adopt that model code of conduct. It's not a function that can be delegated to the CEO. You satisfied, Councillor Johnson? Um, who determines the code of conduct for question? Who determines the code of conduct for employees in 5.103? Is that in 5.104 or is that somewhere else? Mr. Mayor, this section doesn't refer to employees. I think it does. 5.1031 Every local government is to prepare or adopt a code of conduct to be observed by council members, committee members, and employees. So 5.104 is other regulations about conduct of council members. So I think we've got an un unintended side effect here if we remove 5.103. So I would suggest leaving 5.103 in and adding in 5.120. So if 5.103... Mr Mayor, Three. is it the question or is it debating? Because if you're debating... I'm sorry, like my help We're well, just trying to get to the crux of the issue. Thanks, Councillor Bowman. I'd rather get it right tonight than have to bring it back yeah. uh, for the next meeting. Um, through you, Mr Mayor. We think that Councillor Johnson may be referring to an older version and we can review that with him. Thank you. Okay, councillors, I have a mover 
and Councillor Bowman, a seconder and Councillor Congerton. I'll ask, is there anyone against? You want to debate it? Thank, thank you. Councillor Bowman, you have three minutes. Mr Mayor, this is probably a good opportunity for me to say I think there's a little bit more work that needs to be done on our delegations. I would have liked it to lay on the table, but I lost that opportunity. Here's just another example, Mr Mayor, where it is wrong. <coughs> it is wrong and we're going to adopt it. Uh, Mr Mayor, all I'm doing is, from my background, <coughs> correcting a mistake. That mistake is the wrong section that we're actually delegating. Uh, whether the CEO has delegated that to a staff member to be the complaints officer, I don't know. But if he has, I'd question whether they actually had the power to do so because we did not delegate section 5120 previously. Thank you. Councillor Congerton is the seconder. Nothing further to add, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Catalani. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, the, the fact is that um, I don't, I don't know what uh, effect removing uh, this Local Government Act Section 5.1031, Codes of Conduct, from this particular um, um, delegation um, authority is going to have on it. And in fact, I, I do understand, uh, uh, I can interpret legislation and I just cannot do it right now on the spot. It's just, I just do not have the ability to think clearly to figure out how uh, all the different sections uh, link into each other. Uh, first and foremost, I don't really fully understand what a compliance link is. You see that section there that says compliant link? Until, until I actually have uh, some kind of... Um, definition about what a compliance link is, then I don't know what needs to be filled in the box next to it. So it's, it's really premature to actually start removing things from what is a delegated authority that we have had and that's worked. I wouldn't have a problem with adding to it, although even adding to it may in fact have an effect that we don't know down the track. It's a question of trying to uh, link all the different uh, bits of legislation up to see if they work as a whole. And it's just impossible for me to be able to do that right now. Uh, and um, I think if I can't do it, uh, unless there's a lot of people, a lot of councillors in the room that have got, you know, really um, fantastic um, uh, background in, in, in how this, um, uh, th these particular provisions work with each other, then I think that we might end up uh, making a bit of a mess for ourselves down the track if we don't know what we're doing. I don't know what we're doing, so... You have one minute left, thank you. Um, you know, I'd like to think that, um, well, maybe someone could explain it to me and, and then I can uh, vote differently and I, uh, I, you know, challenge some of the other councillors in the room uh, to please explain to me. Thank you. Speaker, for the motion... Any other speakers for or against the motion? Councillor Johnson. Yeah, I'm against Mr May also for the reason previously. Um, I, I think that I think there's a risk here of unintended side effects um, through making this change. Um, there's clearly a reason why 103 was in there before. I now have the, the current version. It is correct. I was reading out an old version. But um, I've also studied law, so I've, uh, I, I completed the... Uh, um, common professional examination in the UK. That's the equivalent of a law degree. I'm not a solicitor. But as um, I just back up what Councillor Catalano is saying, if you make changes like this on the fly, there's a risk of things going wrong. And the business I am in, which is uh, software development, um, you, don't, you don't make changes like this on the fly. They need to be carefully examined and tested. And uh, while I can see that there's good reason to put 5.120 in, there's a real question as why 5.103 is in there. So the only thing I could accept is to add 5.120 and uh, leave 5.103 in. So anyway, that's not the motion on the table, so um, I'm against it. Thank you. Uh, speaker, for the motion. Any other speakers for or against the mo uh, amendment? And your right of reply. Thank you, Councillor Bowman. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And as like the last two speakers... I'm not going to bore everyone with my qualifications, otherwise we might be here for a while. But I am actually got a background in this area. 
um, what's uh, your point of order? The fact is, um, I didn't bore anyone with my qualifications. Uh, in fact, I just said that I can read uh, legislation and I found this difficult. Uh, that's, I don't think it's boring anyone with qualifications. And I, t I take offence to that, and I'd like um, a retraction of that. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Bowman. Uh, Mr Councilor Mayor, I'll be happy to retract it, but I did say I won't bore anyone with my qualifications. But uh, I will retract it. Order. Thank you. Uh, he said, unlike the speakers before. Yes, he has retracted his comment. Thank you, Councillor Catalano. If you can please continue, Councillor Bowman. Mr. Mayor, my background is in governance and it is in delegations and a lot of other things, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm very concerned. I am so concerned that I think someone should have laid this item on the table, but uh, that's gone. Maybe someone wants to defer it. A councillor has said they do not understand what the compliance links are. Councillors, how many years have you been seeing the delegations come to you? How many times have you questioned the delegations? How much debate have you had on the delegations before? When I've tried to move some items under notice of motions, I got told, this is the time to do it, wait to then. But no one does it. Councillors, if you don't know what compliance links are and what they're there for, I actually question why you actually are voting on this item. Councillors, all I'm doing is correcting a mistake. It is regarding the appointment of authorised complaints officer. It is in the heading. And as every councillor saw on the screen, section 5120 states the local government. And when it says the local government, that means we can delegate it. And all I'm saying is let's get the right heading. I'm not saying let's take that delegation away. I'm just saying, let's actually delegate the right statutory power, Mr Mayor. Thank you. I'm now going to put the amendment. Those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Podovnik, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor Richardson, which is nine. The amendment is passed, nine to four. Thank you. Next one, thank you, Councillor Bowman. Mr Mayor, I'd like to uh, speak against the standard motion now, please. If I'm entitled to do so. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillors, ask yourself the question and be honest. Did you fully read all the delegations? Do you fully understand each and every delegation? Do you understand the impact of each of these delegations and are they correct? Councillors, I've got a number of exp years' experience in this. And I have a number of questions, issues and even some concerns, which I've raised some of them today. Uh, unfortunately, to go, keep going through will take way too long. Uh, councillors, everyone knew I wanted to lay it on the table. I question why we waited to the last minute to ask some advice. Councillors, we get briefings and we have workshops on numerous topics, some of them quite operational. Yet one of the most important items we don't is delegations. I find this a little ironic. Yes, I understand delegations aren't sexy. They aren't that interesting, and most members of our community don't really care about them, and they don't think they impact on them, but they can. We talked over half an hour on two items tonight that have delegations. Councillors, we need to be fully across these delegations. We need to discuss and agree to what we are comfortable in delegating to the CEO and whether we'd like to increase certain delegations, for example, or reduce and the impact on these decisions. For example, why is the limit of accepting tenders only one million? What would be the benefit of increasing it to five million? What would be the risks? Do we want to put any restrictions on the CEO who he can on delegate to? Without doing so, allows for the CEO to delegate to any staff member. Was all the councillors aware of that one? They are now. For example, the CEO has delegation reduced to a waiver of fee up to a maximum of five thousand dollars. He has on, de on delegate this delegation. We're not aware of who. Councillors, where is the delegation to the Events and City Relationship Committee? Do they not make decisions? I have not seen any decisions from this committee come to Council for endorsement. A check of the minutes of these meetings provide evidence that decisions are being made. They have no delegation. While yeah, mentioning, the minutes, one minute left, while mentioning the minutes of this committee, can I suggest to staff they review the minutes or suggest they are not compliant? Councillors, is a requirement to review delegations every calendar year. Ours is due, and therefore, if it's not reviewed tonight, we are non-compliant. What does this mean? A cross instead of a tick in our compliance audit return. That is it. 
This should not be a reason to rush this item through. Presenting this item at the very last opportunity runs the risk of what if it doesn't get approved or perhaps prevents further discussion. Councillors, let's make sure we are fully aware and understand what these delegations are, the impacts of these delegations and what we can, whether we can streamline the operations of the city any further. Councillors, delegations are there to streamline. I do not agree we have streamlining and having a council meeting in the second night that's going for probably another four hours is proof of that. Thank you, Councillor Bowman. Um, speaker for the motion. It's Councillor Catalano's motion. Any Councillor Johnson? Yeah, councillors, uh, I'm going to um, support uh, the motion um, as amended. Uh, we need to, uh, to get this out of the way. The, the de delegations that we have, um, as, uh, as amended in, the, uh, in this motion, have been primarily advised to us by the CEO. It is the CEO um, who most effectively uh, determines what the, uh, the delegation should be. The city can't operate without delegations. That's why it comes up every year. And um, I don't know how long the city of Swan has been operating, but uh, um, it's been operating correctly and lawfully <coughs> for all that time. Now, there's no reason why we can't make some, uh, some small changes here and there, but um, you notice in 7.1 there is no long list of uh, amendments by Councillor Bowman. If these were well considered, they would actually be in there, but they're not. Instead, we've got this that the matter lie on the table, which is completely meaningless. It's, all it's intended to do is to stop debate so that we can debate something else and then come back to it. Point later. of order, Mr Mayor. Thank you. What's your point of order? Where did I say stop debate? If someone actually read the meeting procedure local law, they'd understand the difference of deferring and laying on the table. Yes, thank you. Um, you have no... Um, if you can continue your debate. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Yeah, so I'd strongly recommend looking at what it says on page 24, so it just basically stops it and nothing happens. So it's not the way to go. So if you want to defer this, the proper way is a deferment motion and not to say that the matter lie on the table. That's why I said it, because I've read well, it, I've tried to understand it. Councillor Johnson, we've dealt with that yeah, item. I know, I know. We're dealing with <coughs> Councillor Catalano's uh, item, Understand. which is on the board, so Understand. we can remark your, uh, yeah, keep I'll, your I'll comments. I'm just explaining now. that if this is so important, then Councillor Bowman should oh, have submitted a substantial alternative motion, and it's simply not there. So what we've got is uh, Councillor Catalano's motion, which is uh, about preventing the demolition of buildings um, built before 1945 without it coming to the city, and with some amendments by uh, Councillor Bowman. So I'd recommend that we support the motion. And if Councillor Bowman has got any other issues with uh, delegations, then they can be dealt with uh, at another time through uh, Councillor Motion on Notice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, speaker against the motion. Any other speakers for or against the motion of Councillor Catalano? Uh, then I'll ask the Deputy Mayor to chair the meeting. Uh, I'll quickly enter the debate and I'll be speaking against the motion before you on the uh, whiteboard, um, partly because um, I've heard from the uh, Executive Manager of Planning uh, says there's uh, implications to the uh, Building Act of refunding money and we still m may not have a, uh, a result. Uh, we need to make a determination uh, if it comes back to Council, if a determination for a building demolition permit is not made within 10 days, the, the decision still has to be made by Council. Um, unless you hold those over, it may uh, go another three or four weeks before the next uh, ordinary council meeting, um, and I don't think that's uh, any good for anyone. The other bit is about uh, the other parts in there is about re revoking uh, Delegation 43 about employee separation payments and then endorse the guideline execution of city documents. So for those reasons, I don't support Councillor Catalano's um, motion, and I'd uh, encourage you not to support it as well. Thank you, Councillor Catalano. You will write a reply. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, well, it's been a, a very interesting um, debate. Um, I, I don't. Uh, the thing is, I, I actually did go uh, and speak to the governance officer about my amendment, and I did get some advice from her, so that I understood what it was I was doing. I had actually read these um, delegations, and whilst you know, 
there's some aspects of it that I didn't fully understand. It seemed to me that they were in line with the way that the city had operated before. But well, the one amendment I wanted to make, I did go and see the governance officer and, and ask for her advice, and that's what I've got. And in fact, I just want to say also that um, the, the motion, uh, the parts two and three of this motion, in fact, are not my amendments. They're actually the staff's recommendations. Um, so, but the thing is that um, I just don't understand why all of these other um, issues that have been brought up uh, tonight about the other delegated authorities in here, why they weren't uh, done in the same way, why they, why they weren't... Uh, um, the government's officer hadn't um, been uh, given some advice about it or hadn't been asked to give advice, why um, that hadn't been actually... These uh, alternatives hadn't been put down on the table... Uh, for us to discuss and uh, deliberate on properly. So, I mean, I don't know why that is the case. I mean, if it was just um, for some reason to uh, have an impact, some kind of uh, negative impact on my motion, well, that might be some sort of uh, strategic um, way of, uh, uh, you know, uh, debating in this chamber that, uh, yeah, OK... Uh, I'm yet to learn about, but uh, it doesn't seem to be um, really uh, upfront. I mean, the fact is, if 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 you want to change the delegations in the uh, point of order, reflection. Yes, thank you. And if, uh, your right of reply is to address items brought up in the uh, debate. Thank you, Councillor Catalano. If you can keep your yes, okay. To that. The the point of order, uh, Mr. Mayor. I said reflection. I'd like that to be ruled on. Uh, thank you, um, Councillor Catalano. If you can withdraw those. Uh, Statements. Thank Which you. was the statement that uh, you want me to withdraw? Uh, Councillor Bowman. That we hadn't had notice about the up front? Mr Mayor, uh, forget the words because I pretty well switched off. Uh, but however, Mr Mayor, she was implying, Councillor Catalano was implying that I was doing something underhanded or something like that. Um, and that was the point of order I was moving on the reflection. Well, Thank you. it's just a very um, unusual way because we, if, if all of these things were going to come up in council um, in terms of uh, you know things changes that wanted to be a councillor wants to raise on, on the delegated authorities and wanted a briefing session about it, I mean yeah, I would be left. more Thank than you. happy to turn up to a briefing session and give my input and hear from other councillors then and also ask staff about the implications of changes. So I mean you know I haven't got a problem with the um, that being done that way. So I just don't understand why. In fact, it hasn't. We haven't had these changes tonight uh, done that way, and we went through this very um, complicated uh, lay on the table um, uh, motion as well. Um, so, I mean, my suggestion is that um, you know next year perhaps we have a briefing session. Maybe um, councillors who are concerned about making heaps of changes could actually um, move a motion in council that um, we have a briefing session and that we attend it and. Uh, we work through all these matters in a um, much more informed and um, ordered way. Um, Thank you, Councillor Catalano. Yeah. That's your Thank time. Thank you. Thank you. I'm now going to put the motion on the screen of Councillor Catalano. Is those councillors in favour? Of Councillor Johnson, Councillor Predovnik, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Knight and Councillor Richardson. That is five. The uh, motion is lost. Five to eight. Did you get all the names? Thank you, Megan. Uh, thank you. It's... Um, uh, well, no, it doesn't lay on the table because that uh, didn't get a seconder. So I need a uh, motion, councillors. Yeah. Moving the officer's recommendation, Councillor Johnson, seconded Councillor McCulloch. Is there anyone against? Do you wish to debate it? A whole lot of amendments to go through, Mr Mayor. So, please yourself which way you'd like to well, do it. I'm asking if there's anyone against. You wish to debate it? No. no. Um, the uh, mover and the seconder wish to start the debate? Question, Mr Mayor. It's really about where we're at in this meeting. So, I understood that we've amended Councillor Catalano's uh, motion with a whole series of, uh, well, a small number of changes. No, that... That motion lost. All right, but did we did we amend the substantive motion? We haven't uh, touched the substantive motion as yet. 
No, the Council well, of Catalano uh, substantive motion. So when uh, it was amended, those. Uh, sorry, sorry. So yes. yeah, we can't amend them again. Yeah, sorry, uh, Councillor's Catalano motion was to adopt the delegation authority register, including the appointed authoriser, subject to the following amendment. So, in fact, the officer's recommendation, I understand, has been lost. Is that your reading of it, Ms. Lay? Uh, through Ms. Mayor, Councillor Catalano's motion has been lost. Prior to that, Councillor Bowman's six amendments, amendments. were voted on. Yes. Some of which lost, some of which won. But then Councillor Catalano's motion lost. So we have but no motion. the amendments that were agreed on also were lost. You see, they've gone down as well. Yeah, because they were adopted by council okay. in, as part of that substantive yes. motion. As part of your substantive motion, all of those amendments, part of which were lost and won, have now fallen away. Yes. But they may be able to be retabled. No, because you can't bring up a similar motion after one's failed. The yeah, if it's been, if it's, if it's was proved at, by council as an amended motion to that motion, yeah. and it failed, you can't now bring it back and bring in those uh, yeah. same amended motions because it's already failed. Uh, I Only believe the rest of his list. Yeah, that's the list. Mm. Well, you can we, do the rest of the list, but not those ones. We can deal with the ones, ones, ones we haven't dealt with. Yes, but the uh, officer's recommendation would then fail, in my yes, view. Yes, it does. I agree. Councillor Henderson first. If we were to rescind that last lot, uh, then well, are we able to uh, proceed uh, yeah. with uh, getting on with it? Well, you'd need a rescission motion. Well, I'm suggesting to... that, but I'm asking if that can be done. Uh, well, it can be. I think uh, the matter is just going to have to lay for now. Yeah. Councillor Zanino. I think the best option is to defer the matter for uh, a month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I've got a, mo a motion from Councillor Zanino to defer the item for one month till the July meeting, yes. seconded by Councillor Bowman. Is there anyone against that? Mayor. Sorry. Me, I've you. got four people speaking at once, so I can only listen. So to do that, we need to withdraw the current substantive motion from the table. It's been moved and seconded, which is to right. move the officer yeah, recommendation. Yeah, you have your motion by Councillor Johnson. Well, I don't think I can. I don't think I can accept the substantive motion, um, Megan, because it's to, it's to get it off. But he needs uh, to withdraw it if we move to another substantive deferral motion. Yeah. But, Well, I, I don't think you can. I've been told in the past that once a motion is moved and seconded, which it has been, we're well, going with it. Deal with it. Yeah, we've got to go. We've got to go with it. That's but my view. I, I, can, I, I believe I can rule your motion out of order, Councillor Johnson. But you can't, Mister, well, because it's, it's the officer's recommendation. I, 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 well, no, but the officer's recommendation just got defeated in Councillor Catalano's motion. So I have to rule yours out of order. No, oh, that's not how we've done things before. So it's an no. alternate motion. It's been amended. It's been lost. The procedure we've followed here, and it's in in the meeting procedures like laws. We then move on yeah. to the officer's recommendation, which is what's been moved and seconded. Well, I, that's, I that's the process. I don't think I can do that, Councillor Johnson, because part of Councillor uh, Catalano's motion was to adopt the officer's recommendation with uh, an amendment. That motion lost, therefore the officer's recommendation was lost. Well, that's, that's not the process we follow. Oh. If, what the process we follow is alternate motion, that fails, and there are no other alternate motions, then we move on to the officer's recommendation, which has been moved and seconded. So we, 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 there's a risk of making it up as we go along here. OK, well, it's 8 o'clock. We're going to go for our break. I'll discuss it with the governance officer, and uh, if need be, I'll uh, ring for some uh, external information. So we're going to go for a break and we'll come back at 10 past 8. Thank you, councillors.
Uh, we'll resume the meeting, and at this point in time, I've got a uh, motion by Councillor Johnson, seconded by Councillor um, McCulloch, to um, move the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Zanino. Mr Mayor, I'd like to move a procedural motion. And what's that procedural motion, please? That the matter lay on the table. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Henderson, is there anyone against? You wish to debate it, Councillor Johnson? No, no. Sorry, uh, Councillor Zanino, you can speak to the item if you wish, or I'll just put it straight to the vote. I think it just be, should be put straight to the vote, uh, Mr Mayor, because I think uh, we've dealt with this uh, long enough and it's just going round in circles. Uh, we need time to um, gather our thoughts and uh, by laying on the table, uh, it's going to give officers and councillors time to, um, you know, work out what they want to do. So it's the logical uh, way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's no other debate, councillors. I'm going to put the motion that the item lay on the table. Those in favour? Of Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Predovnik, Councillor Catalano, myself, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor McCulloch. That is nine. There were four against. The uh, motion that this item lay on the table is carried. Nine to four. Is that nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it was uh, ten to three. Thank you. Uh, thank you, councillors. Um, we'll move to the next item. Uh, item 7.4, local... Yeah, well, no one's moving a, a motion to do anything different. Uh, thank you, uh, Acting CEO. Item 7.4, Local Law Review Meeting Procedures. It's on page 756 of your agenda. And Councillor Bowman, you've got a number of amendments, I believe. Mr Mayor, I have. Would you like me to read them all out or for expedience, uh, just uh, put it up on screen for everyone? What would you like? Uh, I'll ask that it go on screen. Uh, you've got it in your running sheet, councillors. The changes are obviously those in red. Uh, we'll deal with the um, them one at a time when we go to vote. Uh, and uh, if you need to uh, have a minute's reading time, I'll allow that. Thank you. Just to, uh, in case there's anyone against, there may not be, I don't know yet. Mayor, I will be uh, moving one small amendment. Okay, well, we'll wait till we get that uh, particular one. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. And question, Mr Mayor, I've got amendments as well. Uh, are we going to deal... How are we going to deal with those? Well, uh, we need to deal with them before um, we uh, adopt the uh, total recommendation, otherwise Councillor Bowman uh, has amendments, but other than that, the rest of the... Um, Officer's recommendation would be adopted. So we'll take Councillor Bowman's amendments and then we'll take your amendments, <coughs> Councillor Johnson. M Mr Mayor, to, to quicken things up, I'm happy to move the one motion with both my amendments and Councillor Johnson's amendments if you're putting them separately, uh, noting <coughs> that we, we, we then just get three minutes debate on every amendment. Are you happy with that, Councillor Johnson, that Councillor Bowman uh, includes your amendments in his uh, substantive motion? Or yeah. Thank you. And what's yours, Councillor Henderson? Because I've got nothing before me. Um, so it's under uh, on page ten of the run sheet, under limit um, on number of questions by the councillors during uh, deputations. It's the second last one. Um, the uh, amendment proposed by Councillor uh, Bowman is: the presiding uh, member may limit the number of questions asked by councillors and then add to that to a maximum duration of one minute. I'm happy to include that, Mr Mayor, as the mover. So is that one minute per question or 
one minute per total questions or one minute per question and answer or one minute for all questions and answers. Councillor Henderson, I think uh, Councillor Johnson was asking your question. Just let me have a read of that for a second. So I believe the answer was uh, Councillor Johnson, if I'm reading it now. Uh, Councillors will have one minute to ask questions. So we'll, we'll deal with that when we get to it. Question is about, that's not what it says, it says the response is limited. The response is not the council, it's just the response from the person making the declaration. Simply, put simply, um, to, to limit Dorothy Dix's... Uh, I, I understand it, but I'm just uh, tr trying to make sure it reads right so we all understand it, because I didn't understand it the first time I read it. And Councillor Bowman is happy to accept that as part of his. So, OK, councillors, um, we've all had uh, sufficient time. Uh, if you can start off, thank you, Councillor Bowman. Yep. Quickly, Mr Mayor, um, I'll just go through what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, insert the new clause 2104F. Basically, this will stop any councillor that doesn't get their own way. Didn't like the outcome of council decision in the next month's moves and notice the motion. Um, very similar to what we had last week. Uh, could say very similar to what we've got tonight. Public question times only at council meeting. A uh, great example, last week's agenda forum where a person that was going to be making, well, it was two weeks ago now, making a deputation, also then ask questions beforehand. Agenda forum should be an avenue for community providers information. Uh, Mr Mayor, the petition at agenda forum, if we receive a petition at the council meeting on an item that's on the council agenda, it's really too late. It's much better that we get that before at the agenda forum. Mr Mayor, deputation limits to three minutes. Succinct key points and not repeating what's happened when you have three minutes. It's been working well. Mr Mayor, limit of three, four and three against. Um, this is quite generous. Many local governments are even more restrictive. It's very rare that there's more than three, four or against, except when individual councillors have organised more to speak, which is not what deputation should be about. Uh, Mr Mayor, no duplications or deputations, oral and written. It should be one or the other. Nothing prevents an oral deputation then providing it to councillors in a written format to review later. Mr Mayor, limit the number of questions during a deputation. Um, take the politics out, like Councillor Henderson said. Um, we all know uh, what we all do every, t every now and then. Uh, Mr Mayor, no questions from members at the meeting. That's not on the agenda. It's nearly always used for political reasons only. Mr Mayor, debate reduced to three minutes, uh, more succinct to the point. Um, it's been working well. Um, the motion to be put to be an absolute majority, a 75% majority is a hang-up from the old days. Nothing is a 75% majority that I'm aware of now, uh, or a special majority, so making it uniform. The cooling off period, Mr Mayor, this is a bit of a compromise between nothing and an extended period of time. This allows for a revocation motion to be submitted uh, with the knowledge that the item cannot be actioned but does not hold staff up for action the item with only 24 hours. Mr Mayor, uh, I do not, however, support any of the other proposed changes from Councillor Johnson, um, and I'm happy to explain, but I don't think I need to. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor McCulloch is the seconder. Councillor McCulloch. What did I second? Sorry. I was advised by staff that you seconded Councillor Johnson's motion. Uh, sorry. That was the uh, sorry. It's just sorry, I was one of those. Not have you got the second of down? Thanks. <laughs> no. Thanks, Councillor Parry. My um, apologies, everyone. It's just been one of those nights, and it's not uh, that easy sitting up here. I haven't been uh, particularly well, but okay. So, Councillor Bowman, I apologise. Um, I had Councillor McCulloch down, but that was the previous motion of Councillor Johnson. Your motion is now uh, seconded by Councillor Parry. You wish to end the debate, Councillor Parry? Huge amount of time I just had, Mr. Mayor. I don't think I will, thanks. Thank you. Speakers against the motion. 
Councillor Johnson, thank you. Thanks, Mr Mayor. I do have concerns about um, some of these items. So, debate reduced to three minutes per councillor. As we've seen tonight, councillor, it's possible for a, a bizarre situation to arise where a councillor can speak for three minutes about a carport, um, but, 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 convert, but conversely, um, unfortunately, when talking about something more substantial like the Lloyd Street Bridge or the Stock Road DCP or the Midland Oval, or numerous other things which do require more involved debate, we're still only limited to three minutes. It implies a serious problem, it implies a capacity issue. So, councillors, this is, this is wrong and it's inappropriate. It is, in effect, hobbling this council. Councillors, if this goes through, I'll be bringing a motion to council to reduce our um, pay by three over five. So, you'll only be getting, my motion would propose to reduce your pay to 60% if you're not prepared to put the time in. Councillors, I actually think five minutes is quite restrictive. And I, have, I remember talking to a previous councillor about four and a half years ago, and we were both of the view, this wasn't a councillor who normally agreed with me, that actually five minutes was nowhere near enough for many of the complex items we're deciding on. Councillors, in my view, there should not be any limit at all. Councillors should just use common sense. If it's a, a carport, they should talk for 30 seconds. But if it's a DCP, they might need an awful lot longer. So councillors, we need to demonstrate to our community that we, we are capable and producing meeting procedures local laws that are, demonstrate that we can do our job properly. So, the second item I don't agree with is removing the 75% of majority for um, certain, uh, certain procedural motions. The reason being it can be used to cut off debate. And in the early stages, when I was here on my own, and then there were just three of us, um, <coughs> we, we, I, we did get cut off. But once we got up to a reasonable number, we could continue and we could prove we had community support, we could continue. If we reduce this to just a majority, it will lead to silencing of debate, and it's inappropriate. Now, those councillors who think we shouldn't be doing debate in this chamber, I know Councillor Parry, you're one of those, you don't like debate, um, you don't do a lot of Lord it. Mr. Oh, Mr. I have no Mayor. problem going into a sad. debate. Doesn't like debate. So, Mr. Thank you, repeatedly Councillor Johnson, I'll ask you to withdraw those comments. I'll withdraw that, Mr. Mayor, in which case, I hope, pretty you, cheap won't shot, actually, Thank you. I hope you won't be limiting debate again and you won't be voting for this. I hope we win this one, Mr. Mr. Yeah, but, yeah, but exactly Thank you, councillors. Councillor Johnson exactly, has that's the, the floor. Problem. You're not interested in debating issues. Maybe you, you need to start getting involved. That's what you're paid for, councillor. He's going to do it again, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> if, if you can continue, Councillor Johnson, you have uh, 40 seconds left. That's true. So um, those, are, those are the ones I specifically oppose. And councillors, it's actually, this, what we do here in this room is important. I know some councillors just think that they're here until they can get pre-selected for some... Um, higher office, but that's not the point. You're supposed to be a councillor first and foremost, and you're supposed to debate. That's what you're here for. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, you can point of order me on that if you like. But it is actually quite important. You're here primarily to be a councillor. Now, um, next item is statements of civic duty. Councillors, I do think that in the entry to the meeting, there needs to be statements of civic duty. It's what we're here for as councillors to serve the community. It doesn't need to be anything special or fancy. It just needs to Thank be based you, upon Thank you, Councillor the Johnson. Office. That's your three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, speaker for the motion. Any other speakers for or against? Councillor Catalano. Um, if I understand it, uh, we've got Councillor Bowman's motion with amendments, with Councillor Johnson's amendments together? Yes. Yes, okay. So, okay, I, I actually have got problems with both of um, the motion and the amendments. Um, uh, I really do not understand uh, who who's going to call the judgment if we're talking about notices of motion um, to be excluded from the agenda if it's similar in intent or substance to a notice of motion previously. Who is going to make the call that the motion is similar in intent or substance? I mean, really, that is uh, that requires some judgment and somebody's going to have to make a judgment, it's not the same as the previous um, uh, provision, which was you just can't bring back the same motion. Or similar. Or similar. But this is similar in intent or substance. Who's going to make that, um, who's going to call, make that call? Um, and I think probably um, it could end up with some injustice uh, 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 um, in, in this in this chamber, where um, you know some motions won't be uh, heard, um, and then 
I I'm really uh, find it very difficult to limit um, the public from giving us information um, and for them to uh, only make their replies uh, available to us in a, a maximum of one minute. Um, and, and that, in fact, that it, there might be a limit to the number of questions that councillors can ask of people who make deputations. I mean, people turn up to this chamber to make deputations who I don't know, never seen before, and um, I wouldn't even know how to contact them. So I need to ask some questions, and I think um, to be able to make an informed uh, decision, I really do need to make, ask those questions. And then going over to Councillor Johnson's amendments, I mean, I just cannot understand how the presiding member can make a, state, a statement of civic duty on my behalf. I mean, it's just not possible. Uh, he can make a, civic, a statement of civic duty on his own behalf, but not on mine, so I can't support that. And, um, um, yes, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other speakers for or against the motion? And Councillor Bowman, you will write a reply. Thank you. Mr Mayor, just quickly, um, presiding member and CEO, uh, that's what the Media Procedure Local Laws does, that you, you preside. Uh, three minutes, Mr Mayor, you can ask for more. We can actually even suspend the Media Procedure Local Law. Uh, so a very controversial item. If we want to have a good discussion without formalities, we can suspend that. Um, Mr Mayor, we don't have to waste three minutes, even if we've got three minutes. So talking about a carport, we don't need three minutes. Um, Mr Mayor, uh, no disrespect, but uh, you doing a statement of civic duty on my behalf is meaningless to me. I saw an oath or an affirmation, whatever one it was. Um, Mr Mayor, the limit of three and three uh, is generous. Uh, I take people back to the Western Swamp Tortoise one, where we had quite a few, where every councillor voted in favour of that motion. And the response was, if we had known, we wouldn't have got so many people to speak. Mr Mayor, the one-minute response, uh, we've all seen it. Uh, I've asked questions of people of the gallery. Uh, it was a yes-no answer. That was what I was hoping for. And then they tried to wrap it on for quite a lot longer. So I think that's a, a fairly good compromise. Mr Mayor, they are all compromises in my amendments. Um, and so I just ask councillors to go through each one. Uh, you've all got your own personal views and just think about how that will streamline the City of Swan operations. Thank you. We'll now deal with each uh, amendment individually, councillors, and put them each individually to the vote. So I'll call it uh, Amendment 1. It's notices of motions to be ruled out of order if debated by council within the previous three months. Um, it's up on the board. So those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Podovnik, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor Richardson and Councillor McCulloch, which is 11. The two against were Councillor Johnson and Councillor Catalano. That amendment is passed. Thank you. 11 to 2. Your next one, thanks, uh, Councillor... Oh, sorry. The next one... Uh, if we can move the screen down. It's public question time limited to ordinary council meeting. Um, so uh, I'll just read out the red just so everyone's fully aware. Public question time is limited to the ordinary council meeting. Questions will not be taken at agenda forum. Those in favour? of Councillor um, Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor Richardson and Councillor McCulloch. I believe that's ten. And the three against were Councillor Bradovnik, Councillor Johnson and Councillor Catalano. That amendment is passed. Uh, moving on to the next one. Petitions be heard at agenda forums. Uh, a petition may be presented to a council at an agenda forum by... And I'll... Sorry... Yeah, sorry. So those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Podovnik, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor Richardson and Councillor McCulloch, which is 12, and the one against was Councillor Johnson. That amendment 
is passed. Going on to the next one, deputations are limited to three minutes. Uh, it's pretty um, an easy one. Deputations not to exceed three minutes unless approval is given by the presiding member or a resolution of council. Those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Podovnik, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor Richardson and Councillor McCulloch, which I believe is 11, with three against, uh, being Councillor Catalano, Councillor Jones, and was that you, Councillor? Two against. Oh, sorry, two against. So it's 11 to two. That amendment is passed. Moving on to the next one. Um, limit on number of deputations for or against, and this will the presiding member will accept no more than three deputations for or against on any one item on the agenda. Those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor Richardson and Councillor McCulloch. I make that 10, with three against being Councillor Predovnik, Councillor Johnson and Councillor Catalano. That amendment is passed. Uh, the next item. No duplication of deputations, oral or written. A presiding member will not accept both written and oral deputations. Only one form of deputation is allowed per person. Those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor um, Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor McCulloch. I make that nine with four against being Councillor Richardson, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Johnson and Councillor Podovnik. That motion is also, or that amendment is also passed. Uh, the next item. Uh, no duplication or written dip. No, I've done that one, sorry. Let's cross that one off. Uh, limit of number of questions by councillors during deputations. The presiding member may limit the number of questions asked by councillors and the addition by Councillor Henderson, which becomes part of the substantive amendment. The response by a person making a deputation to a question is a maximum of one minute duration. Those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson and Councillor McCulloch. That is eight with five against. That uh, amendment is carried. Thank you. You got the names, Megan? All right. Uh, the next one. No questions from members at the council meeting on items not on the agenda. Uh, delete all clause 5-1 questions by members relating to the business of council. Those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson and Councillor McCulloch. I make that eight mm -hmm. with five against. Have you got all the names? Thank you, Megan. Ta Moving on to the next one, debate uh, reduced to three minutes per councillor. Uh, that one's very clear, councillors. Um, I'll put that. those in favour. I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor Richardson and Councillor McCulloch. I make that 10, with three against being Councillor Podovnik, Councillor Johnson and Councillor Catalano. I declare that carried. The next one is that the motion be put uh, reduced to an absolute majority. Um, and that is uh, removing the 75 per cent uh, quota as currently to a majority or an absolute majority, which is eight. I now put that amendment. Those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Podovnik, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor Richardson and Councillor McCulloch. I make that ten with the three against being Councillor Johnson, Councillor Catalano and Councillor Knight. That uh, is also carried. Uh, cooling off period, and the change there is, uh, I'll read it out. 
Uh, the CEO and member of council staff with responsibility for subject matter of a resolution may implement a resolution of council after a period of 24 hours have passed after that decision was made, and this includes decision made at adjourned meetings. Those in favour? I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Pradovnik, Councillor Congdon, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Knight, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor Richardson and Councillor McCulloch. I make that 11. Those against were Councillor Johnson and Councillor Catalano. That is also passed 11 to 2. Moving on to the next page, councillors. These are items that were included, but they came from Councillor Johnson. And I'll read these out. Uh, one is to delete item 9.1C and D, that the matter lay on the table, and D, that the matter be taken off the table. And there's a reason there that the reason is uh, archaic, has no effect, and the same result can be achieved by a firm. Those in favour? Of Councillor Jones, Councillor Podovnik, Councillor Johnson, Councillor Congerton, Councillor Parry, Councillor Knight, Councillor Richardson and Councillor McCulloch, that is eight. That motion is passed, eight to five. We've got all the names, thank you, Megan. Uh, the next one, uh, add a statement of civic duty um, to uh, for the presiding member to read out at the beginning of every motion. Those in favour? I have Councillor Johnson. No, every, oh, if I said motion, I meant meeting. Uh, so um, I'll just read it again for clarity that uh, the presiding member shall make a statement of civic duty on behalf of council uh, based on the declaration of office at every meeting or council meeting. Those in favour of Councillor Johnson, Councillor Pradovnik, that motion is lost, 2 to 11. Number three, to add section 2.4, opening the meeting, add a new 2.41 and renumber the remaining sections. The presiding member shall read out a, uh, the legal disclaimer and the reason for that legal disclaimer is leg legalistic and should be given before, before the more positive opening, positive statements. Is that... So you're withdrawing it? Thank you. Uh, number four, uh, delete 2.104D does not contain sufficient supporting information or rationale for the reason the motion may be seeking information and rationale. Um, I'm just going to put it. Uh, those in favour? Well, it's your amendment, Councillor Johnson. Mayor, you were asked to put it to a vote. He's had the debate well, time. Thank we've, you. We've had the debate, so I'm just... Well, I just read it out. I read the amendment out. We've had the debate. What is the section? Well, I'm going to put it to the vote, councillors. If we could just have some more information about Clause 2.10, please. Well, I, I, I'm happy to oblige you, but the reason we have debating time is for you to debate all the items in the amendment or the motion. Uh, no one brought it up, and to me it just doesn't make sense as it sits, Councillor Johnson, but you had ample opportunity instead of uh, wasting your three minutes on Mr. speaking Mr. Mayor, other other councillors this evening could have taken the trouble to prepare their motions better. We had an example of that, and you didn't speak to them in that way. So if you don't mind, I'll just Well, this is your motion. You. I want to put it to the vote. Now you want to um, perhaps re-enter the debate. I want to, I'm not entering the debate. Mr. Mayor, I, I think read it out. points going for the previous debate. I think we should go to the vote, Mr. Mayor. No, just read it out. So 2.10 D. D does not contain sufficient reporting information or rationale. Yep, and so I'll read your amendment four again. Delete 
2104D does not contain sufficient supporting information or rationale. And the reason for your uh, amendment is maybe seeking information or rationale. I'm going to put it to the vote. Those in favour? Councillor Johnson, and there are 11 against. That is lost. 12. 12. 12. Oh, sorry, 12. Uh, that completes that item, councillors. Mr Mayor, can I just check that we actually did move number one, which was to, to, make, to propose to make the attached City of Swan meeting procedure local law. We voted on all the amendments, but I don't believe we voted actually on that itself. Uh, well, I think uh, it's... I think um, your amendments were to uh, the meeting procedures local law. Subject to the following amendments. Subject to the following amendments. OK. So I now have to read. Uh, so in the event that council resolved to advertise the local law, the presiding member is to give notice that to the meeting for the purpose and effect of the meeting procedures local law as follow. Purpose. The purpose of this local law is to provide for the proper conduct of council meetings, committee meetings, agenda forums and briefing sessions. And the effect? The effect of this local law is intended to result in better decision making by the council and its committees, orderly and efficient conduct of meetings dealing with the business of council, increased community participation and understanding of the business of council, greater public awareness of the decision-making process and a more transparent and accountable local government. Thank you. That takes us to the next item on the agenda, which is 7.7, .7, Annual Meeting of Electors Motion 25, Request to Withdraw Support for Eastlink WA. It's on page 829 of the agenda. Councillor Catalana, you have an alternative motion. Uh, yes, thank motion. you. That the council resolve to one not support the East Link project, two write to Main Roads WA accordingly, three record the reasons changing the officer's recommendation is that the East Link project is an outdated Perth Adelaide freight project. Thank you. Do I have a seconder, Councillor Knight? Is there anyone against? There is. Do you wish to debate it? Councillor Congerton, you wish to debate it? Oh, I'll debate it very quickly. So, uh, Councillor Catalano, oh, I've got to hear from the move and the second to first. Uh, you have three minutes. Thank you, Councillor Catalano. Yeah, yes, thank you. Um, this East Link Orange route uh, is actually the old Perth Adelaide uh, Highway, Freeway Highway. Um, it was put together back in the 1970s, perhaps even before that, when Midland was really um, a peri urban area. I mean, we know Perth has doubled in size and Midland is no longer on the edge of um, the metro area. Now, the thing about this Eastlink, proposed Eastlink route, which is going to uh, basically the intersection of Reed and Row Highway and then uh, go east from there, is that it's not going to help the congestion on the Great Eastern Highway because the majority of traffic that's on the Great Eastern Highway, which is 35,000 vehicles a day, uh, that um, only 2,500 of those vehicles actually drive uh, uh, from the other side of Mundaring uh, through to Northam and then on to wherever they're going east. And of that uh, 2,500 vehicles, only 650 of those are trucks. So the Grayson Highway is really predominantly for traffic uh, going around the Mundaring surrounds. Um, 2J Road um, basically carries 19,000 vehicles a day and um, uh, out of that only 6,300 of those vehicles and these, these uh, aren't trucks of these vehicles uh, go beyond Stoneville. So the whole point about you know, it being uh, we're having to spend um, this enormous amount of money um, on, on, a, on a, that particular route is probably... Are not a good idea and it's not a good idea to be supporting old ideas because the thing is that uh, there's going to be a new, as we all know, industrial area uh, in the Bullsbrook region, in Bullsbrook, and um, I am advised that that new industrial area in Bullsbrook is going to be 
at two and a half times the size of Hazelmere and Malaga put together. So you might think that the East Link route, which is actually really devised for you know Hazelmere and Malaga to feed into, that actually the real freight is going to be emanating in the future from the Bullsbrook area. So that's where a real demand, two and a half times the size of what we currently got, that is where the real demand for freight traffic is going to come from in the future and freight traffic going east. So um, the thing is that, you know, that freight traffic, if it doesn't, if we're not supporting a, a, a route east from, from Bullsbrook, uh, directly from Bullsbrook, and if we're supporting uh, all the traffic coming down North Link and then chugging along and hitting all the congestion and, uh, and all the residential and urban traffic along uh, uh, Reed Highway, that has enormous implications for uh, our residents and for, for the City of Swan. Um, you have 30 seconds left. Thank you, Councillor We've got, Kailana. We're going to have huge amounts of environmental damage uh, from uh, interchanges being put in, in uh, around Midland, Middle Swan, um, and also there's going to be heaps more traffic and noise and vibration and dust going along uh, from Beechborough, Bennett Springs, uh, Caversham, um, uh, Dayton, and those areas are just, that are already suffering from noise and dust I uh, issues. And we're going to have uh, Ellenbrook traffic being affected Thank by you, all that Councillor heavy traffic coming That's down. Thank you, Councillor time. Uh, Councillor Knight is a seconder. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, no, I can't support it either. It's uh, for many reasons, really. Um, the financially, I mean, it's going to cost a fortune. I'd rather that money was spent maybe in health or maybe in some clean energy projects or something, not just another road. Um, really, why do we need it? It uh, seems a duplication um, that's not really necessary. The environmental damage alone. I mean, it's we're losing like 200 hectares of, of bush, um, it, it's just going to be devastating. The next motion tonight is Councillor McCulloch's um, the Black Cockatoos. Uh, if we support that um, and we also support the East Link, then, then we're, we're supporting saving these birds but then taking away their habitat. Uh, it, it's, it, it's hypocritical. Um, again, this is an, an old plan. Um, and like all these old plans, I mean, there's a, they seem to have a, like a, a commandment from Moses that, you know, it must be built. Um, maybe what was a good idea then was, is it still a good idea now? 30 years ago, the world signed up to the, the Kyoto Protocol. And today we're, we're 28 years away from net zero that the, the state and the federal government have committed to. Um, surely it's time to take stock of these, these developments uh, and, and the impact. There's no one has come up with how this is going to be offset. And there's no plan of how the animals and everything that, that in our environment, I mean, this is just going to be another nail in a coffin for many of our species. Co the cockatoos are already endangered. So, yes... Uh, we have to take stock of, uh, of where we're going, surely, because um, 20 years' time, I mean, this Bullsbrook um, industrial zone, it's just going to be a huge heat sink. And I've heard it said that our children and grandchildren might be working there. Well, I mean, I, 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 hope, I hope they don't, because we're, we're heading for 50-degree days if we carry on like this. Our 1,200 trees a year on our urban forest canopy plan is not going to not going to cut it so let's have a some truth in, in, in what this is really going to cost us aside from the finances what it's really going to cost in terms of livability for the city of swan and uh and our environment thank you uh thank you speaker against the motion Canc question councillor bowman through you mr mayor to staff uh, just a couple of questions um, I've heard now from both debates uh, that we are spending. Can I just have it clarified that I'm right? The City of Swan is not spending any money at this point in time. Uh, Mr Jack Arena. 
Yeah, so at the moment, the funding that has been committed has all been from uh, the federal or state government. Um, so there's been no city funding okay. committed. And Mr. Mayor, my other question is, as part, as part of this project, am I correct that three of our congested intersections are going to have um, grade separation? Uh, correct. And if we don't support, is there a potential of putting that at risk? Uh, it's hard to comment for that, but that would be up to main roads. Okay, thank you. Okay, speaker against the motion. Um, well, I intend to speak briefly against. I'll ask now if there are any other speakers for the motion. Otherwise, we should be straight back to Catalano, Councillor Catalano after I speak. So there's no other speakers for or against. Then Mr Deputy Mayor, I'll ask you to take the floor. Um, I don't support the, the motion. Um, there used to be uh, the orange route. It's now called East Link along with grade separation along Reed Highway at intersections such as Eltone Road, uh, Drumpulia Drive and West Swan Road and Reed Highway. Later, there'll also be grade separation at Great Northern and Rowan Reed. So by not supporting the East Link project, the, the council will be recommending to the state and the federal government that we don't want to improve traffic flow, that we want congestions at traffic lights rather than traffic having free flowing uh, access, which I don't think uh, is very good for the environment, having vehicles, uh, tens of thousands of vehicles a day stopped at traffic lights when flyovers could go in. Additionally, I just don't understand the debate if we're going to have an industrial area in Bullsbrook, which is on the Great Northern Highway, so the traffic from there will go north into the Pilbara and into the Kimberley. Uh, traffic on the Great Eastern Highway will go up uh, to perhaps Kalgoorlie, the, those eastern goldfields area, and then onto the Air Highway through Norseman, uh, and uh, what have you. So one goes north, one highway goes north, one highway goes east. If you can show me how you can build a road between Bullsbrook and Northam over the Darling Scarp, over the Avon or the Swan River and all the other rivers and the mountains or the hills in the way, that would be more detrimental. The most convenient, the best option, which went through horrendous planning decisions and the reason the orange route came, because there's about 12 different colours on a map. There was blue and green and purple and black and white. The best gradient, thank you, um, Deputy Mayor, the best gradient to get traffic to move east, to take all those trucks out of the townships of Kalamunda, coming down Green Mount Hill, where we've had multiple fatal accidents, the safest way is to put them up 2J Road on the orange route, it's been in the Metropolitan Planning Scheme, and just because it's an old plan doesn't mean it's a bad plan. We just haven't had the funding made available. The state and federal government have now committed $20 million for the environmental assessments, all the pre-planning to be done. It will take hundreds of trucks off uh, the road because they'll be able to come down as much larger trucks rather than breaking down north of Northam at the moment, driving the smaller truck down to Perth, then having to go back, pick up their extra trailer, and then drive back again, it will cut all that out because the road will be able to take it. Pe Mr. Thank you. I was just, my last point is people in uh, Gidjiganup uh, uh, have been supportive because it will give them ready access to uh, the CBD of the City of Swan. Thank you. Uh, being no other speakers, Councillor Catalano, you're right of reply. Uh, thank yes, you. thank you. Um, actually, it isn't uh, 200 hectares of um, road reserves that's going to be. It's 700 hectares, and that is uh, the last remaining vestiges of remnant bushlands, wetlands, Maori and Jarrah woodlands, I mean, habitat, cooling, moisture-retaining wildlife corridors, Aboriginal sites. I mean, it is... <laughs> terribly bad in terms of environmental uh, impacts and um, anyway that's uh, that's to be pondered on because that's the future uh, that we're looking at in the face here. Um, the thing is that um, Bullsbrook trucks are going to have to go east 
because that's where the majority of our traffic uh, comes from. That's where the most of our freight comes from. And uh, it's all very well to say, oh, well, that's fine. They'll just go down Great Northern Highway or they'll just go down um, the North Link and find their way onto uh, the, uh, the new overpasses or whatever at Reed Highway. Oh, that, that sounds simple, but when you hit, when you've got one of these big trucks and when you've got a lot of them and they hit that kind of urban uh, congestion, I mean, you're, you're asking for a lot of uh, delays, a lot of time constraints and a lot of costs and eventually those people, that the, the businesses that will be located in Bullsbrook area will be clamouring, absolutely clamouring for a decent road east. And, you know, it's not for me to plan that for the state government. It's for the state government to plan that. But it's my, it's my role here tonight to urge you to consider looking further into the future because this plan that we have before us is outdated. We are, we are going to put in... Uh, we're planning for an industrial area in Bullsbrook that is two and a half times our current capacity in Hazelmere and Malaga. So that's big. And those, those uh, companies that are going to relocate up there, which they will... You have one minute left, thank you. Once they relocate up there, they're going to have uh, some big demands for traffic infrastructure to get their trucks and freight moving eastwards <coughs> quickly and efficiently. Um, and that's what we should be thinking about here in this council tonight. And as we know, um, by continuing to support this uh, Eastlink project, yes, it's not going to cost us anything. I mean, of course it's not. It's a state government project, but we're supporting it. And we shouldn't be supporting outdated plans. The cost, however, to all of us... As, as taxpayers, because eventually the money will effectively probably come from the federal government, the cost to us all as, as taxpayers is enormous. I mean, in the billions of dollars. So we should be making sure that we support uh, a road infrastructure that will meet our future needs, not what the one that would have met our needs 20 years ago. Really, we've Thank you, got to look Catalano. at it again. Thank That's your Thank three you. minutes. I'm now going to put the uh, motion of Councillor Catalano. Those in favour? Of Councillor Johnson, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Knight, Councillor Richardson, which is four. The motion is lost. Those against were the other nine councillors. You got the names? Thank you, Megan. Thank you. That takes us to the next item on the agenda. Mr. Mayor, can we ask the what item are you looking for, ma'am? Sorry? That one and I Okay. Uh, well, I've been mean, advised we need a staff recommendation for the uh, matter we just discussed. So that was moved by you, was it Councillor McCulloch? No, I was just stating. Okay, I need a mover and a seconder for the staff recommendation. Move Councillor Parry. Seconded Councillor Zanino. Is there anyone against? Do you wish to debate it? OK, I'm just going to put it to the vote. Those in favour? Of Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Predovnik, myself, Councillor Parry, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor Richardson and Councillor McCulloch, which is nine. I think there's three against and Councillor Congerton is not in the chambers at the moment. So it's nine, three and one outside the chamber. Uh, do you have a motion, did you say, Councillor... Um, McCulloch, were you moving something? that we go somewhere else? Okay. Okay. Mr. Mayor, should we move the urgent business item in confidential well, now? That's what I was just asking. Yeah. Or we well, can deal with Councillor McCulloch. Well, I think this one will be very quick. So, Councillor McCulloch, it's item uh, C1.1. It's the Black Cockatoo Water Station and nesting boxes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Sorry, councillors, there were some minor amendments, just some rewording and a restructure of my motion, so it is not considerably different to the initial one that you had. Um, so C1.1, the Black Cockatoo Watering Stations and, stations and Nesting Boxes. Uh, one, to approve the current proposed bird watering station for Kayat Munger Brook to be progressed as a pilot project whereby the learnings from the project be used to inform further investigations to support the long-term protection and sustainability of the carnivies 
Nyalyanok and the red-tailed Carrick black cockatoo populations across the city of Swan. The approval of the pilot project to include part funding of $3,500 from the City of Swan and $5,000 from North Swan Landcare for the purchase of the bird watering station for Kayat Munger Brook in partnership with Kingsford Estate installation costs. Partner Sorry, Councillor, before you go on. Uh, in our um, paperwork, it's got $500 and you just said $5,000. I just want to clarify it before we go I any further. I thought I said $500, but... No. Okay, so it's it's five hundred. It's five hundred. Thank you. Please continue. I'm sorry, must have been that coffee. Partnering with Kingsford Estate in regards to ongoing maintenance required by the bird watering station at Kyatmunga Brook. Three, request city officers prepare a report investigating options in regards to supporting the long term protection and sustainability of the Carnaby's black cockatoo across the city of Swan. Aspects of the report to include but not limited to potential watering stations at appropriate sites within the City of Swan, including the identification of strategic sites beneficial to birds in consultation with BirdLife WA suggested sites and visible to the public for educational purposes. Report to include costs involved in the purchase, installation and ongoing support required for each watering station. B, strategic and purposed plantings of food sources for the species across the City of Swan, including consideration around established food sources along roads detrimental, detrimental to the Carnaby's black cockatoo, food sources in new residential developments, food sources in existing parks and recreational areas, and an estimation of the amount or area of current food sources that will be cleared for future residential development and the impact to the black cockatoo populations they currently support. C. Potential nesting sites for the Carnaby's black cockatoo in partnership with private property owners including potential city co-contribution to nesting boxes that private property owners wish to establish on their property, work with local environmental groups to donate suitable natural nesting hollows retrieved from trees felled in the process of land clearing for residential developments. D. Potential community and stakeholder partnerships and collaborations with local land care, conservation and friends group that facilitates increased monitoring, education and awareness of the species and including the installation of signs along busy roadways where black cockatoos forage, ongoing education and awareness campaigns for residents, businesses and road users, and also exploring options for a school education campaign to design posters and or bin stickers that promote the awareness of Carnaby's cockatoo. Councillors, my reason for the motion. The City of Swan is a large local government that includes urban, urban semi-rural and rural areas, plays a vital, significant and leading role in supporting endangered black cockatoo populations. With increased support mechanisms, the existing lack of data for this endangered bird could be significantly improved as to where black cockatoos are currently feeding, roosting and nesting. An ongoing commitment to supporting the long-term protection of our black cockatoos will raise awareness of the potential threats faced by the birds, identify critical black cockatoo habitat and empower our local communities to engage in conservation activities in their local areas and on their own properties to greatly improve habitat for these endangered birds. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Uh, I'll take Councillor Jones. Thank you. Anyone against? Uh, watch, is it a footnote? Or? Uh, is there any issue with that, Councillor McCulloch? Thank you. I'll just wait for the um, minute clerk to uh, get that in. Assess rainbow lorikeets uh, used off the nesting box. So with that um, footnote, I'll ask once again, is there anyone against? Being no one against, I declare it carried unanimously. Now you had a um, motion, Councillor Parry? Yes, Mr Mayor, I wish to move to item 9.1, Ellenbrook Arts Conf uh, conditional grant 2020 to 2021 performance report, please. Thank you. We've got a motion from Councillor Parry that we move to uh, the item dealing with the uh, art, um, the Allenbrook art. Uh, and can I add also, Mr Mayor, as well, that if there's any spare time, we'll go through any other C items. 
Uh, we, this is the only one of my understanding we dealt the with. The other councillor motion, sorry, C1. Point. Thank you. Uh, you are seconding that, Councillor Congerton. Is there anyone against moving behind closed doors to. Uh, you are Councillor Bowman, you wish to debate it? Uh, if you start the debate, thank you, Councillor Parry. If I don't debate, does Councillor Johnson have the right to say anything? No, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Congerton. In which case, Mr. Mayor, if he's, uh, the councillor is making an adverse reflection, it's a behavioural issue. Can we address it? Well, he's, if uh, he's referring to Councillor Bowman, he should refer to Councillor no, Bowman. Yeah, I it's think a he was referring problem, to Council. you, Councillor Johnson. Yeah, but it's a behavioural issue. Thank you. OK, uh, Division 3. Councillor Congerton is the seconder. Councillors, please. Councillor Congerton has the floor. No, Mr Mayor, I don't need to talk to it. Thank you. Councillor Bowman speaking against going behind closed doors on this item. I am, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, Admin Reg 4A states may go behind closed doors. Section 523, subsection 2, may close to the members of the public. <coughs> Mr Mayor, the report quotes 523, subsection 2C is the reason going behind closed doors, which is the contract ended into. This was over two years ago now, so hardly confidential, uh, and nor should it be. Mr Mayor, want to increase next year's payments from 250 to 330,000 because they've made a decision to go against their business case. Uh, is not a reason, Mr Mayor. The community should hear the debate. They should hear how we're deciding on their ratepayers fund. This is called being open, transparent and, accounts and accountable. Um, Mr Mayor, I wanted the deputation to go behind closed doors because I thought there may be some confidential information. I don't see anything that was said there or in the report that is actually confidential. So why wouldn't we be debating, having this debate in the open? Thank you. Speaker, for the motion to go behind closed doors. Any other speakers for or against the motion? Being no other speakers, do you wish to exercise your right of reply? Well, Councillor Parry wishes me to put it straight to the vote. Those in favour, going behind closed doors. I have Councillor Jones, Councillor Pradovnik, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry and Councillor McCulloch. That's seven, uh, I believe, with 13 councillors here. I'll just ask you to raise your hands again so I can just double check the numbers. Councillor Jones, Councillor Bradovnik, Councillor Congerton, myself, Councillor Parry and Councillor McCulloch. Is that seven? Six. Six. Okay, then the motion is lost. Uh, we won't be going behind closed doors, but we'll be moving to this item next. So, uh, I'm just going to find it confidential. Out of the confidential. Okay, uh, we've received a rescission motion on this uh, item, and Councillor Johnson, I believe you've moved the rescission motion. I think so. Councillor McCulloch's yeah, moved the uh, Councilor revocation. Moved the rescission motion. Councillor Johnson's got a motion. Ah, oh. I can't even find it. Uh, thank you, Councillor McCulloch. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, part A, the revocation motion. I've given notice of a motion to revoke the decision of council made on the 1st of June ordinary meeting of council in regards to item C3.3, Alan Brook Arts Conditional Grant 2021 Year 1 Performance Report. Do you want to read through all of that, Mr Mayor, or just take as read? Uh, I'll ask the council, do you want the whole item read or taken it as read? Mr Mayor, uh, the public who are listening don't have the luxury of seeing this. Yep. Thank you. True, Please Councillor continue, Bowman. Councillor uh, McCulloch. Number one, endorse the year one performance report for 2021 as detailed in this report. Two, not support the requested funding increase for the third year of the current grant as requested by Ellenbrook Arts. Three, note that a report to Council before December 2022 will be required to consider the year two performance report on whether to tender for community arts services in Ellenbrook from July 2023 onwards. Four, provide feedback to Ellenbrook Arts. That Council A, that Council is concerned on the sustainability of the business model due to the proportion of funding supporting the lease. B, that Council wishes to support Ellenbrook Arts in seeking state government funding to support their business model and reduce reliance on city funding. 
C, that Council requests an increased focus on community art outreach programs, including via the Grapevine Community Arts Centre. D, that Council provides feedback on their year one performance report against the nine KPIs as detailed in this report. And E, on the reasoning for not providing the requested additional funding for year three of the current funding contract as detailed in this report. Five, publish on the City's website a summary of the year one performance report. Six, record the reasons for changing the officer recommendation being one, the business model does not appear to be sustainable. The significant costs for the leasing of the facility are drawing away funding from service delivery. There is inadequate funding being received from other sources and there is inadequate funding from the state government. To provide the additional funding to enable the leasing of more floor space is not an appropriate use of sitting funding, especially when there is competition from other high priority activities. Two. There needs to be an increased focus on community art outreach programs instead of the gallery as this can increase the amount of engagement with City of Swan residents and ratepayers, whilst also planning for the possibility of reduced future funding from the City in future years. The reasons for the notice of motion to revoke are, one, no debate took place on this important decision, two, there's a risk that Ellenbrook Arts may become insolvent, three, additional information in regards to Ellenbrook Arts second year of reporting shows considerable growth. Additional part funding will assist with momentum to ensure sustainability. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Johnson. Question. Question Councillor Richardson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. At the last agenda forum uh, after the presentation uh, for Ellenbrook Arts, we requested um, from Ellenbrook Arts any financial um, uh, information regarding their performance, and I just wanted to know whether we had received any information or emails regarding that information that was sought. I believe I received an email from Mr. Bishop uh, on that item. Yep, but from Ellenbrook Arts, their actual breakdown? Uh, no. I don't recall all the detail, but I believe Mr Bishop... Um, that, was, that was Mr Bishop's uh, breakdown, but sorry, not one... Sorry, I've got Mr Bishop online. Oh, yeah. uh, Mr Bishop, can you comment on that question, please? Uh, yes, I can, Mr Mayor. So, at the Agenda Forum, there were some questions from councils, um, and I emailed those out on the evening of Sunday, the 29th of May. Um, there wasn't question that I recorded that requested specific breakdown of um, their accounts from Ellen Book Arts. The questions were to do with um, what is the attendance split between the Grapevine and Ellen Book Arts Gallery, who pays for the rates, and a third question I recorded was around a split of attendees between City of Swan and external residents. Thank you, Mr May. I did actually ask at the Agenda Forum from Ellen Book Arts if they could provide that, and she said yes. So I just wanted to confirm uh, well, that there was no nothing sent. Well, um, you've heard the answer from Mr Bishop. I can't take it any further than that, Councillor Richardson. OK, so I've got a mover in Councillor McCulloch, a seconder in Councillor Johnson. I'll ask again, is there anyone against? There is. Do you wish to debate it, Councillor Bowman? Thank you, Councillor McCulloch. Uh, you have three minutes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillors, returning to this item, looking at what we approved last week, and there are things that, with some further information that has come to light from questions to Ellen Brock Arts, based on further readings and going back through some stats and facts, that um, not supporting the requested funding increase or a portion of it, um, as you will see in Councillor Johnson's um, alternative motion that may follow if this revocation is successful, um, not supporting that requesting funding actually doesn't give Ellen Brockhart's momentum from what we're seeing in projected year two reports. That hasn't come to Council yet, and it will very soon. What we saw, and from information um, in talking to um, execs and board members from Ellen Brook Arts, is promising growth post-COVID, growth that saw continued activations, supporting um, artists in residence, supporting um, 
projects and workshops within Ellenbrook Arts and reaching demographics across the city of Swan who are at risk. Councillors, not supporting or considering this additional funding to ensure that momentum and a considered step up from where Ellenbrook Arts is now would I believe be detrimental to Ellenbrook Arts with the growth and with the considerable impact that they are having on members or residents across the city of Swan. Yep, one minute left, thank you. Councillors, we also need to consider the considerable monies that we invest in sporting facilities and maintenance across the city of Swan, and it is great to see. But as an educator myself, we have a young population and we have populations in the city of Swan. Point of order, Mr Mayor. What's your point of order? Relevance. Please? We're talking about the revocation motion. I think Councillor McCulloch's one step ahead of herself. I think she's uh, pointing out difference in the spend and it's a uh, budgetary item, so I rule you have no point of order. Thank you. Please continue, Councillor McCulloch. So those young people, those residents that aren't sporting-minded or orientated, giving them an opportunity to engage in their passions and what grows them as individuals, what meets their needs for health and wellbeing, is something that we need to consider, and that we need to consider into our long term. So, councillors, I do ask you to consider this in the light that state funding is limited, that Ellenbrook Arts are already and have proven that they have requested and received certain grants through state, and that is undeniable. Thank you, Councillor McCulloch. That's your three minutes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Johnson is a second up. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just ask councillors uh, to turn to page 48 in the uh, supplementary confidential agenda. I'm going to refer to the top two uh, sentences in that letter, so if you could just get ready. Councillor, my primary, councillors, my primary concern, um, and the reason for revocation of this, is uh, no debate was held. So we didn't get to discuss what are the, uh, the key issues about, um, about Ellenbrook Arts. Um, we heard a very good deputation, and um, we, got some, we got some facts, but those did not get discussed by council. And uh, I really do debate, think debate is important. It enables councillors to, to get fully across the issue, and unfortunately we didn't do that. So that's why we're back here. Now, councillors, we have funded Ellenbrook Arts, I believe, to a total of $700,000 over three years. And if you look now at page 48, and it says right at the top there, confidential, which is why I'm not going to read it out. So um, you can read what it says about the rental, and you can see on that second sentence there what the impact would be if we don't provide uh, this funding. So there's, uh, there's clearly a risk here. And this council, as the, as the majority funder, is responsible for mitigating and reducing that risk. Um, as it says in my motion that follows, you know, we have a responsibility to provide, um, if you like, artistic um, opportunities for people uh, in Ellenbrook and the broader city of Swan. It's not just Ellenbrook. And uh, I'm concerned that without debate and without providing some funding, um, there are going to be unexpected and serious consequences that uh, were not anticipated and were not discussed because there was no debate. So that is why I think we, we need to re revoke this. So councillors, we're not behind closed doors, so we can't go into the details, but I think everybody would agree, if you read those two sentences, you can see what could potentially happen. My motion that follows councillors reduces the risk by providing um, $40,000 worth of funding, which I would believe would be sufficient because my reading of this report is... You have one are, minute left, thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. There are a number of items included in uh, Ellenbrook Arts' proposal which p potentially they could cut away, and mm. it would mean that they could spend the money on the uh, specific additional commitment which they have made. And it would also enable... My motion would also um, advise Ellenbrook Arts that the city would like to have representation on their board. Currently, L LWP appears to be the, uh, the major heavyweight there. Um, I think we need to have a City of staff, City of Swan staff member on that board just to provide some oversight into funding decisions. So, councillors, I think a decision has been made and um, we had no input into it and then there was no debate. We've sunk $700,000 into this and I think it is the correct thing to do because it, that is very comparable uh, with the Midland Junction Arts Centre. The two locations are a long way apart. 
we need to be providing this kind of service in Ellenbrook. So, councillors, that's my reason for supporting this, uh, this revocation motion. And I, I did suggest that we do this almost immediately after the meeting. I felt we, we need Thank to you, discuss Councillor this. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. That's Thank your you. three minutes. Thank you, Speaker, against the motion. Thank you, Councillor Bowman. Mr Mayor, I'm just going to stick to the revocation motion. Mr Mayor, where's the additional information that we've been provided? What has changed? Mr Mayor, <coughs> when I saw this revocation motion, and let's look at those three points. No debate took place on this support decision. Every councillor here had that opportunity. They chose not to. <coughs> they chose not to. Maybe they thought they were going to get a different alternative outcome. But they chose not to debate this item. That's not a reason for revocation. Mr Mayor, there's a risk that Allenbrook Arts may become insolvent. Unless councillors have got additional information that I haven't got, and I'm pretty sure it would indicate that if councillors get information on a council item, we all get it. I'm a bit concerned, Mr Mayor, that I've heard from Councillor McCulloch that have been talking with the exec and board members on this, do we get the information? Mr Mayor, the additional information in regards to Ellenbrook Arts' second year reporting shows considerable growth. Additional part funding will assist with the momentum and ensure sustainability. Mr Mayor, when I read the financials, uh, I don't see that. So again, am I missing something here? Or is there new additional information that changes my mind? Mr Mayor, Council Allenbrook Arts made a very poor decision to use substantial funds on the lease of a building and want to increase the cost even more. <coughs> this is ratepayers' funds. What would our ratepayers think of the fact that a community group that is getting next year 250000 now needs another 80000 to apparently stay afloat? Mr Mayor, additional information in regards to Allenbrook Arts shows considerable growth. Where is this information? Mr Mayor, I find it ironic and maybe it's just me, but when other councillors have submitted revocations that others have called baseless simply because the vote didn't go their way, you and one also, minute left, thank also you. there was no new information how certain councillors reacted, yet here some are now doing the very same thing. What's that called, councillors? Remind me. The amount previously agreed to council was far greater than what staff had previously recommended. Why? I'm still to get this answered. Each year the amount has gone up and now they want an additional 80000 over and above the allocated amount. Why? Because in my view they have made bad decisions about leases. They are not being held accountable nor responsible with the money that the city has provided them. Councillors, there is no new information. So why are we really even considering this revocation? Perhaps it is councillors that supported the motion last week that now support the revocation motions are the only ones that can really tell me this. Or maybe it's just something different. Uh, <coughs> Mr Mayor, revocations. We are dealing with revocations when people don't get their own way or whatever. Mr Mayor, there is no new information that would change my mind and I can't see why it would change everyone else's mind. Thank I'm you. not that's supporting your, it. That's your three minutes. Thank you, Councillor Bowman. Speaker for the motion. Any other speaker for or against the motion? Councillor Richardson, thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillors. Last week at the agenda forum, or the week before, we had plenty of time to ask quite a few questions. I'm against this motion predominantly for the fact that Ellenbrook Arts took out a second uh, rental space without coming to the City of Swan to uh, discuss it with councillors and signed that agreement. So they took on an extra debt of that space without... Point of order, Mr Mayor. What's your point of order, thank you, Councillor? Um, it was an agreement, an, an agreement that was signed. It has been um, given to them to use so that there is no... Negotiated. No, no contract in place. Thank you. So it was a verbal... Well, it, it's just been given to them at no charge to utilise just as a goodwill. A and when does that goodwill run out? Do you know, Councillor McCulloch? Um, I'm not sure. Thank you. Continue, um, please, Councillor Richardson. Thank you. I'm pretty sure it was... An old I'd like to ask Mr Bishop a question, that it was a, a few months' time. And that's why they were seeking the extra funding. Can I, thought, I get clarification I on that? I thought the answer to that question was the 1st of July. Thank you. So it's coming up quite soon. So they negotiated this, whether it was for money or not, without consulting the City of Swan. So then left us with a couple of months to then come up with the extra, extra money to take on this rental. The fact that Ellenbrook Arts are in a great position, they're getting a 
City of Swan building and getting rent from that building by hiring it out to other community groups could be uh, giving that, that rental... Point of order, Mr Mayor. Uh, what's your point it's of order, It's not a City of Swan building, sorry. The Great Fire? No, it's not. Uh, Mr Bishop, can you clarify that before... Allenbrook Management. You there, um, Mr. Mr Mayor? The, the Grapevine building um, is... It, it's, it's under an unusual arrangement where um, it will revert to the City of Swan eventually. Um, the, as I understand it, Liberal Arts have an exclusive right to use that facility as a pedicle lease for a number of years. I can't remember when it expires, it's like 10 years away or something like this. But if, if any time it expires or they let it go, it does revert back to the city. So I believe it does end up with the city in the long term, but it's just under a, uh, a lease, exclusive lease to, to Edinburgh Arts at this point in time. Uh, thank you, Mr Bishop. I hope that clarifies the uh, situation. Thank you. Can please thank continue. You. Uh, they are still taking uh, rent from that particular premises, but not contributing back to the amount that they're needing then for that second space, which they'll be paying for in July. There is no contribution given back, but asking for an extra 80,000. I'd also just like to reach the point, uh, address the point that Councillor McCulloch made about reaching demographics across the city of Swan. It's not reaching far enough or those, uh, those at risk individuals. I've not yet seen a program run through Ellenbrook Arts that is reaching out to uh, at-risk individuals. Not only that, the events that I have attended at Ellenbrook Arts, I have spoken with teachers from private schools who have been thrown in the deep end at the last minute to throw their kids' art stuff in to fill gaps in the, in the um, programs. Given three or four days' notice on an ad hoc, just have you got something you can throw in? I have not yet seen it reach enough schools or actually um, offer enough arts programs to uh, ratepayers and their children in the city of Swan. I cannot left, support this motion and I ask you uh, not to either. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Speaker for the motion. Any other speakers for or against the motion? Being no other speakers, Councillor McCulloch, you have your right of reply. Thank you. Councillors, you've heard some different aspects in regards to this revocation motion. I am um, not going to really go on any further other than I would ask you to support it so that we can consider um, some additional funding to enable them to continue with a continued degree of success. and. I can continue to speak to um, Councillor Johnson's motion if this revocation is successful to unpack some of the discussion that we have heard here. So I do encourage you to support it, councillors, considering the very inequitable um, balance that we have between some of our sporting costs and um, ongoing concerns in the city compared to the funding that we do provide for our arts and culture. Thank you. Uh, thank you, councillors. Just before I put that motion, I'll remind you, as a rescission motion, this needs an absolute majority of eight votes. So, those in favour of Councillor Jones, Councillor Predovnik, Councillor Johnson, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Congerton, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson and Councillor McCulloch, which I believe is eight, so the revocation yes. motion is successful. I'll just read those names out again so the minute clerk can get them. Councillor Jones, Councillor Podovnik, Councillor Johnson, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Congerton, Councillor Zanino and Councillor Henderson and Councillor McCulloch. The rest were against. The revocation motion is successful. Councillor Johnson, you have a motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. My motion, Mr Mayor, is uh, that Council resolve to endorse the Year 1 Performance Report for 2020-21 as detailed in this report, provide an increase of $40,000 for the third year of the current grant. This is 50% of the amount requested by Ellenbrook Arts. 
Note that a report to Council before December 2022 will be required to consider the Year 2 Performance Report and whether to tender for Community Art Services in Ellenbrook from July 2023 onwards to provide feedback to Ellenbrook Arts that the decision to extend the lease space appears to have been taken without consultation with the City of Swan, who are the major funder of Ellenbrook Arts. B, to request the City of Swan CEO or his delegate to be invited to be a member of the uh, Ellenbrook Arts Board to enable the City to have an earlier input into financial decisions. And C, to request Ellenbrook Arts to, read out to reach out to a broader demographic that is representative of the City of Swan population. Five, to publish on the City's website a summary of the Year 1 performance report. Six, the reason, the reason for the motion is that there is a risk that if additional funding is not provided, that Ellenbrook Arts may not continue as a going concern. B, it appears from the Ellenbrook Arts submission that savings can be made. C, public art funding should be a benefit to all the residents, electors and ratepayers in the City of Swan. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor McCulloch. Uh, hang on, just let me write down the movement and the seconder. Uh, what's your minor amendment, Councillor Henderson? Well, 4B, <coughs> instead of his, uh, maybe he's there or he's her, we don't know who the new CEO is going to be. What do we put in there, Delegate? Thank you. So that's acceptable to move and second up. I'll ask, is there anyone against? Do you wish to debate it? We do. So, Councillor Johnson, you have three minutes for your debate. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I think this is where we should have got to in the first part of this meeting. Look, uh, Councillors, part of the generally accepted purpose of local government is to provide art galleries. Just in the same way we provide sporting facilities, swimming baths, parks and libraries. Um, I'm, Councillor, in, in sort of supporting this, I'm very mindful of growing up as a child, fortunate to be living in Manchester, which has one of the best municipal art galleries anywhere in the world. It's one of the best art collections anywhere. And amazingly, it is a local government art collection. It's absolutely astounding. So I often note the, um, the lack of... Um, uh, facilities uh, since I've been in Australia, particularly Perth is underserved and um, I think we need to do everything we can. Now councils in, in the uh, agenda forum would have heard me uh, being quite critical of uh, art fund, arts and art funding. Um, that's because um, I've got quite a bit of experience of it, believe it or not, and uh, I, I, my view has always been that it is a, of a benef great benefit to the broader community and not just to uh, the people that you typically see going to, uh, to art centres. I really think there needs to be a broader outreach. Um, I'm also concerned about uh, provision in Ellenbrook. Councils, we've got the Midland Junction Art Centre here in, uh, in Midland. Uh, it has a similar purpose to Ellenbrook Arts and is similarly funded. And I don't believe that anybody would do anything uh, to sort of jeopardise that and, and cause it to, uh, to, to stop prematurely. Um, we need to have two art centres. Um, the problem, of course, is Ellenbrook is a long way from Midland and the Midland Junction Art Centre. It's not convenient for the Ellenbrook community. And there's no City of Swan Art Gallery owned art gallery building in Ellenbrook, other than, as you've heard, the grapevine, but that's not used as an art gallery. So maybe this is something we need to look to in the future, but right now we're having to deal with um, uh, providing art gallery services um, in, a, in a leased building. You have one minute left, thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, in my view, if we do not provide some funding, there's a chance, as discussed in the report, that uh, it may not be viable as a going concern. Um, the other change I think we need to make is we need to have re a representative from the City of Swan on the board to provide appropriate advice and guidance when taking the sorts of decisions that uh, Ellenbrook Arts have made. I think we've seen other um, organisations make similar decisions. And if only there'd be better oversight, I think then there might have been a better outcome. So, Allenbrook Arts provides an important service to Allenbrook. Um, frankly, if Midland needs an art gallery, then so does Allenbrook. I'm prepared to support providing 50% of what Allenbrook Arts have asked for, as uh, I think they can make savings and they can continue as a going concern. I'd also like to see, as you heard me say in the agenda forum, I'd like to see Allenbrook Arts expand its demographic reach to the workers of Allenbrook, the rest of the City of Swan, whom I, I guess I characterised at the uh, agenda forum, 
Well, it's since been pointed out that uh, there's a wide range of uh, different uh, roles in uh, in Allenbrook. Thank you, Councillor Johnston. That's your three okay. minutes. All right. I'll just, can I just finish up with my final sentence? Last sentence. So, so, so councillors, I do support Allenbrook Arts. I supported it in August 2019, and I will support it again, uh, but it needs to improve its governance and reach a broader demographic. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor McCulloch is a seconder. Uh, thank you, councillors. Um, from last week, Yes, Councillor Johnson is our resident watercolour specialist. Me, I'm our resident crayon specialist. I draw stick figures and that's where it finishes. I do play the flute and I like to sing. Councillors, um, just in responding to some of the aspects here in regards to Ellen Brook Arts, we've seen a promising year one report. Um, year two, I think there's a lot to build on. And there are certain aspects that we see with Ellenbrook Arts where they do have a significant focus on environmental outcomes. Their arts and cultural programs are being used as powerful vehicles for educating and informing our residents across the city of Swan in regards to environment and sustainability. A lot of those workshops, exhibitions and artist in residence um, events were specifically designed around environment and sustainability and that is really important partnerships with Bullsbrook Recycling Centre, partnerships for certain events to get pick up and to educate and to promote. Um, Ellenbrook Arts also sees it as a priority and we've seen that and there is evidence and further evidence in that um, year two which I have attended many events to support, facilitate and showcase our Indigenous artists and their culture, embedding it in our communities. It is a perfect vehicle. Arts and culture, Ellenbrook Arts, it is a significant vehicle for a lot of this. And I've seen the connections even with our Swan Valley, Valley artists and Indigenous artists through there as well. Councillors, City of Swan funding across our two arts and culture precincts and we can see even from state that Midland and Ellenbrook are significant arts and culture precincts and that is something to keep in mind. We have one minute left, thank you. Lots of grants have been sourced for programs and residencies from state departments, Lottery West etc and they have um, been awarded to give a lot of um, momentum. Councillors, um, I think also Ellenbrook Arts has previously invited City of Swan staff onto the border to be present at those board meetings. So great. I think that's a great thing and I think it would be prudent. But I have seen considerable um, impact for people, young people with differing abilities. Only last Saturday night I in attended um, the Baronias Under Snow, the Grey Wing Ensemble. I spoke to a young resident she has autism. Her artworks are on the walls and local musicians, students and other musicians wrote musical scores to actually showcase and speak to her art. You couldn't put a price on that and it was incredible. So councillors, please consider supporting this and looking at how unique we can be. Thank you, Councillor McCulloch. Speaker against the motion. Councillor Bowman, thank you. Mr Mayor, councillors, this is not about whether you support art or not. This is about responsible management of our ratepayers funds. Councillors, Allenbrook Arts wants to lease even more building space with a cost even more money. Councillors, nearly all of this $40,000 is going to go towards an increased building size in the lease. Explain to me how this is our problem. But then again, with a bigger building, Maybe there might be some more doors, and Councillor Johnson, next time you're locked out of this building, you might be able to enter one of those doors. Councillors, if I was to ask any community group in any of your wards, if they had the luxury of having a building 24-7, they would jump at it. Councillors, we've given 700,000 over three years, and then on top of that, we're about to give, potentially, 40,000 more. Councillors, do you know where the money's coming from? Because I sure don't. Where would 40000 come from? Well, I had a bit of a think about this. I didn't think too hard. And perhaps we could remove some of our services that cost more than others. Perhaps we could remove services that are covered elsewhere, but residents need to travel that little bit further. So here's a couple that came to mind. Swan Valley Place Office. 
How far is this from the City Admin Building or the Allenbrook Place Centre? Or what about the Guildford Library? How much does this cost to run per person, per book, per use, compared to other libraries? Or perhaps we can reduce the amount of money we provide to Allenbrook Collective? I am happy to start looking at each and every service, asset, etc., and start recommending what is excess, what is not an efficient cost, what is duplication, triplication, etc., how we can be more streamlined. But, councillors, do you really want me to go down this path? But maybe it could be a positive outcome as there would be less pressure on our future. Point of order, please, increases. Mr. Mayor. Um, what's your point of order? Thank you, I Councilor think Congleton. it sounded like it was a very threatening tone. That do you really want me to go down this path? Uh, I think I'd like to have it retracted. Uh, thank you, Councillor Congleton. I rule you have no point of order. The tone was uh, quite moderate from what I've heard in this uh, chamber when no one else has objected. So please continue, Councillor Bowman. Councillors, not every councillor is fortunate to have a financial background or financial qualifications like Councillor Parry. And perhaps understanding a council budget, a council financial statement is not you have your one strength, minute left, thank you. But it's no difference to your household's budget. You spend more and more, and either your capital items like your car and your house deteriorate badly, or you go into debt to increase your income. Mr Mayor, can I record the next part? As I keep saying it time and time again, you can't spend more money and more money and not increase rates. Councillors, we need to make the hard financial decisions, and they won't please everyone, but make irresponsible financial decisions and do it for the wrong reasons, and then this is on you. Councillors, Allenbrook Art is getting a fantastic deal. The previous council went against the professional advice of the officers and gave even more money. I really wish someone could explain this to me. Then went against their own business case and paid two and a half times more for a lease. Two and a half times more. And now they're wanting to increase it by that much more again. Mr Mayor, it's not about arts. It's about responsible financial management of our ratepayers' funds. Mr Mayor, where is $40,000 coming from? And I expect every council that votes for this will be voting for an increase in rates because we keep doing this week in, Thank week you, out. Councillor Bowman. That's your three minutes. Speaker for the motion. Any other speakers for or against the motion? Councillor Richardson, thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor, councillors. I'm speaking against this again due to uh, point B in uh, Councillor Johnson's uh, motion, notice of motion, which is to request that the City of Swan CEO or his or her delegate to be invited to be a member of the EA board to enable the city to have an earlier input into financial decisions. What if that CEO doesn't want to take on another board membership or another thing at night time or another you know, meeting for, for that month? Who do we have then? What, Who's going, to, who's going to take on this load? Who's going to be there to attend this if no one else will be and we've got no representational transparency? So asking for that in the motion, if no one else wants to take that on, it's just a, it's an open motion. What about uh, you know, revolving around the Bullsbrook Recycling Arts Projects? I've seen one, one program, which was using recyclable goods to make uh, animals and creatures out there. Who's going to ascertain or be kept across the board as to whether the Ellenbrook Arts Programme reaches out to a broader demographic that's representative of the City of Swan? Who's going to follow that up? How will we know? Who will we get that report from? In response to Councillor McCulloch's, um, I guess, similarities to sporting, uh, sporting groups in the city that we, um, we invest in our sporting ovals and sports, at least those ovals are free to families that pay rates in the City of Swan. Arts is a very expensive... Um, hobby for young children to take on and it sometimes is unaffordable in those classes. At least these ovals are open to the families to use that space and parents usually fund those sporting fees. So I'd just like to take into consideration those points. Thank you, Councillor Richardson. Speaker for the motion. Any other speakers for or against councillors? Uh, then Councillor Johnson, you'll write a reply. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I'll, I'll just stick to uh, commenting on what has been said in debate. Um, first well, of all, good. the CEO may. Sorry? I said that's good because that's all you can comment on. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm making that point because I'm often hearing debate uh, in something up which he's not responding to debate. So that's what I'm doing. So the CEO, um, if he decides that he doesn't want this role as a uh, board member of the Ellenbrook Arts, well, he can, uh, he can delegate that to a member of staff. 
Um, councillors, $40,000 on the rates. That's 0.04% of an increase. So on my rates, that would be about 80 cents a year increase. And I'm sure we can make the savings somewhere. Um, a better, maybe a better decision could have been made by Ellenbrook Arts, but that's why my motion proposes, proposes putting somebody on the board to provide appropriate advice. We've already spent $700,000 on this, and uh, it appears that um, through decisions that have been made, uh, we need to provide more funding to ensure that it does uh, continue. Um, when we're talking about going down paths, it's council that makes decisions. Uh, not just one councillor. Uh, it needs uh, eight councillors uh, or a majority of councillors to decide. Um, whose problem is it? It's our problem if it closes, councillors, because then we'll be able to explain to people in Ellenbrook what happened and if only we provided $40,000 it would have continued. Um, I think we, we just need to be, be aware of this and uh, we're going to make sure it doesn't happen again by putting somebody on the board. And um, this is responsible management of our ratepayers' funds. So what we're saying is something, this is an important service to the community of the city of Swan and particularly to those living in Ellenbrook who need this service. Um, we have um, funded it uh, because we believe it's the right thing to do and we are prepared to overlook uh, the particular situation that has ris arisen and we are going to make sure that you it doesn't happen again. You have one minute left, thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. We're going to make sure it does not happen again by uh, requesting the CEO to put somebody on the board to provide appropriate uh, financial advice. So, councillors, I think this is an important um, service uh, to Ellenbrook. Well, I think uh, Councillor McCullough explained it quite well. And uh, I think we, we need to support this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm now going to put the motion. Those in favour of Councillor Jones, Councillor Predovnik, Councillor Johnson, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Congerton. Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson, Councillor McCulloch. That's eight. The motion is passed, eight to five. It's the same vote as last time. Thank you, Megan. OK, councillors, that uh, takes us to the next item on the agenda, which I believe we now start at uh, C1.2, Councillor Knight, list of accounts on page 840 of the agenda. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, my motion is that Council uh, resolve to provide the list of accounts paid in Microsoft Excel format to all councillors from the July Ordinary Meeting of Council onwards. Uh, onwards. If you can just put that in. That wasn't uh, written down here. Uh, reason for the motion is with the Excel program, Council is able to sort, order, compile, organise and track data sets with formulas and functions. Council will be able to scrutinise a list of accounts paid in Excel format with greater ease, and this will help provide openness, transparency and accountability. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Johnson, is there anyone against? You wish to debate it? Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Knight, you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, this motion is not any re reflection on staff or staff's abilities or anything. Um, I'm disappointed that the officer's report uh, goes down this road, really, and, and I reject it. It's, the intent of the motion is not to insert counsel in the administration process. Uh, it doesn't ask for extra information, and it doesn't ask for permission. It simply asks that the council is given the Excel format for us to scrutinise. It's just transparency. Uh, surely this is within our remit as the uh, kind of oversight committee. It's a part of our fiduciary duty. Um, with this program, we're able to build a picture of how ratepayers' money is being spent. Most accounting professionals use Excel, and I'm sure the city is no different. It's a great tool for analysing data, especially handy for making data analysis, and this is what we as councillors need to do on behalf of our ratepayers. Excel allows councillors to easily sort financial data and helps to prepare for upcoming, upcoming meetings. And it just replaces the old calculator and a pen and paper. It's a tool available to us that we should be using. The motion does not increase the city's workload. It's simply a format conversion. So if we do not have access to Adobe Pro, which could, be convert, could convert the, uh, the, the PDF over, 
uh, it could be done. Um, and it's really concerned that the city does not support this motion as it intrudes parents transparency of costs and allows ratepayers and councillors the ability to analyse data using the same information but able to be formatted and sorted. This is just for transparency, transparency of costs. So please support this motion and the transparency it will give us. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Johnston is a seconder. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Look, um, uh, when I did my... Uh, uh, Australian Institute of Company Directors course, one of the things that the, uh, um, many of the very good um, presenters said to us, your role um, as our director or a councillor was basically nose in, they said nose in and hands off, hands out. So you're supposed to be looking at, uh, at information and understanding it. And uh, this is a good example of that. So the information provided to us in the agenda. You notice it is provided to us in the agenda, councillors. It is for our information, but it is challenging to deal with. Um, you have to read it through manually or you have to search um, through the PDF to find what you think you might be looking for. But uh, as Councillor Knight says, if it's in Excel, there's all kinds of things you can do. Um, you can put it into pivot tables, for instance, and I can just imagine, uh, um, remember the um, our well-known um, examiner of this item, Mr Bob Ellsbury, could put it into a pivot table and determine how much has been spent each month on burp payments, which is a business unit recognition programme, in case you don't know what it is. There are probably other things like that that can be, that can be identified. So it's not going to do any harm. Secondly, is this extra work for the staff? No, the extra work for the staff is converting the CSV file, the comma-separated value, um, into the PDF to put it into the agenda. The data already exists. All Councillor Knight is asking for is that comma-separated value file that already exists just to be sent out to all councils or to those councils who are interested. It's not more work, and um, it, uh, it provides an additional method level of, uh, of oversight. I know in my, in my own job, I always say to my supervisor, any audit you want, any audit at all, don't care what audits you want to do, happy to take them on because I feel I'm doing my job properly. And I'm absolutely confident, really, the city should be saying the same thing. It should be saying, don't worry, yeah, you can have the data, take a look at it. So that's why I'm supporting this motion, Mr Mayor. It's the principle of nose in, sort of hands off. Uh, but we need to be looking into things in more detail. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker against the motion. Councillor Congerton, when you're ready. Uh, look, I'm against the motion, and it really drives me to refer to the officer's comments, paragraphs 1, 2 and 3. Um, I can't help but think this is uh, going to lead to some form of ward accounting, uh, which for me isn't a requirement of a receipt of an Excel program. If there's something that you want from the city staff, then ask them. I'm sure they'll be able to provide it. But I don't think we need to drill down to an Excel program that would depict... Um, layers of expenses that go well down the lower end of the, and I, was saying, I don't mean disrespectfully, the food chain to get to the very bottom of it, because um, and those in and hands off, if I was, uh, and I have been a director of companies and owner of companies and CEOs of companies in my lifetime, and, and I don't drill down to the band-aids, I don't drill down to the debtor, I don't drill down to the... Um, shoes, I don't draw down to the dress or the uniforms. What we're looking at as a, uh, an executive board level is to see the, the trending movements on items and this um, drilling down to this level um, is for me uh, not a requirement. Thank you. Speaker for the motion. Councillor Bowman. Mr Mayor, I'm going to support this motion uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I agree with what everyone has, has said, uh, but if it makes our job any easier to do our role, I'm all for it. Noting that it's only to councillors, it's not to, to Mr Bob, whoever. Um, again, uh, water counting, I'm not sure how we do water counting with what I've seen um, when I actually question uh, certain invoices that you can't actually tell what it's about. Mr Mayor, this is not going to tell us whether it's the seven dollars or eight dollars we're paying for cupcakes for citizenships. Um, Mr Mayor, but what that's going to do is 2.72A of the Local Government Act, which is our role as a councillor. Uh, Mr Mayor, is to oversee the allocation of local government finances. Mr Mayor, if that helps us do our role, why wouldn't we be supporting this? Uh, again, I've heard it's not going to be any extra work. Uh, 
it would be good to get this information if that's what individual councillors want. Thank you. Speaker against the motion. Any other speakers for or against the motion? And Councillor Knight, you'll write a reply. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Um, nose and hands off, exactly. Uh, that's that's all it is. It's just it's just us to, to see the stats. Who, who doesn't love statistics? It tells a story. It's great. Um, surely there can't be a risk with too many eyes on, on ratepayers' money. I mean, if it was your money, w would you be happy with your accountant just going through the PDF or the account calculator? Of course you wouldn't. You'd, you'd want the best technology, the best format that, that they could use. So, um, look, it's only transparency. We're not, I'm not asking to be involved in the administration process or anything like that. It's just, just transparency and accountability. That's all. So we can get a picture. Thank you. Thank you. I now put the motion. Those in favour? of Councillor Bowman, Councillor Predovnik, Councillor Johnson, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Knight and Councillor Richardson, which my count is six. Can you just put your hand up again? I'll just recount. Councillor Bowman, Predovnik, Johnson, Catalano, Knight and Richardson, six. The motion fails. The other seven are against. Thank you. Uh, the next item, item C1. Well, I'll seek direction of council. Uh, do we finish the meeting now or we continue on, councillors? Thank you. I've got a motion from Councillor Johnson to continue. Do I have a seconder? Being no seconder, Councillor Johnson, your motion lapses. Can we? Well, it's a briefing session. We're going to be here, or most of us will be here. Well, I've got a motion from Councillor Henderson to continue tomorrow night at six o'clock. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Johnson, is there anyone against? You wish to debate it? Councillor Congerton or Councillor Predovnik, you wish to debate it or not? No. Okay, I'll put that motion of Councillor Henderson's to the vote that we continue this meeting tomorrow night at 6pm. Those in favour? Of Councillor Jones, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Johnson, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Henderson and Councillor McCulloch, which is six, the motion fails. I then had a motion from Councillor Congerton that we hold all matters over to the July meeting. Seconded Councillor Bowman. Is there anyone against? Being no one against, I declare that carried unanimously. I thank you all for your attendance, your perseverance. It's been a reasonably difficult night. Chairing, there's lots of uh, curveballs coming up. But I thank you all for your participation. Thank you. Thank you, staff. And thank you to the member in the public gallery and uh, anyone watching online. The meeting is closed at 1 minute to 10. 9.59.